Hello guys, my name is Steve Edex. I'm going to be your instructor in this course. I'm proud to say I am an IT consultant, consultant that I've trained a lot of students when it comes to web development, web design. I've done a lot of research when it comes to cyber security, software engineering, and lots more. Okay, so I'm going to be your instructor in this course. I'm going to walk you through the grid, CSS grid layout. How you can be able to use the grid layout terminologies and functions to create a real website. So in this course, I'm going to walk you through the introduction, and after then, we'll do um, an advanced wireframe creation and also creating the real website. All right. So let's move into the introduction right away. Grid layout meaning. Now you might be asking yourself uh, what the grid layout is all about. Okay. So the grid, the CSS grid layout model offers a grid based layout system with rows and columns, making it easier to design web pages okay so it comes in form of columns it comes in forms of the rows and um, in the rows and columns you can be able to create a lot more of those columns right that uh, comes in form of the width right when you are designing your website and also you can form a lot more rules in the website okay so in this course will be of uh, creating a lot of columns that comes in form of the width and also the rows uh, that can be able to span different items that will be in the grid container we will also talk about the grid container itself which is the outer part of the grid itself all right and the grid item happens to be in the grid container. We'll talk about that in the course. We'll talk about the grid alignment, which have to do with uh, how you can be able to position your um, item inside the container. So we'll talk about the vertical and horizontal adjustment of the grid alignment, right? We'll talk about the grid gaps, okay? column gaps, row gaps, and gap. So those are the functions, right, that we are going to use in this course. And the column gaps have to do with actually uh, making some sort of changes when it uh, involves the space, right, the space on the column area. And we talk about the row gap, which have to do with adding a gap space that would be able to affect the role area okay and the gap itself is like a short cut uh, keyword that mostly use the column gap and the role gap we'll talk all about that in the course um, we'll talk about the grid justify content property okay so the grid uh, justify content property is used to align the whole grid inside the container okay We'll talk more about that in the course, right? Uh, how you can be able to justify it. it's much more similar to uh, the grid alignment property, okay? So the property has space even, space around, space between, center, start, and end, okay? We'll move further to grid lines, how we can be able to, uh, let's say, make reference to the line when we are uh, merging or spamming different grid items that is going to be inside the container so we'll talk more about that uh, in the course right so um, the grid lines consist of the column lines and row lines right so the grid like i said is a shorthand property for grid template row, rows right the grid template columns the grid template areas and so on and so forth now we'll talk about the aligned content property ok 
okay so the align content property is used to vertically align the whole grid inside the container okay so the property that center space evenly space around space between start and end so we'll talk about the grid item which happens to be part of the grid container is the inner part right so a grid uh, container contains grid items by default the container has one grid item for each column in each row you can style the grid items so that they would span multiple columns right and or rows so we'll talk about the grid column properties in the course the grid column property defines on which column to space an item. You define where the item will start and where the item will end. Okay, so the grid column property is a shorthand property for the grid column start and grid column end property. All right, uh, we'll move further to the grid row property. This also uh important keywords that we are going to stress on when we are going through the course so the grid row property defines on which row to place an item you define where the item will start and where the item will end okay so the grid row property is a shorthand property for grid row start and the grid row end property we'll talk more about that we'll uh, make references will elaborate more on that in the course and you tend to understand all what we are talking about right here be just a writer we'll do more of the practical which will give you a broader or more understanding of what we are trying to say here okay so move further to the grid area property the grid area property can be used as a shorthand property for the grid row start the grid column start the grid role end and grid column properties right um, now I want to use this image to give you a scenario now when you want to let's say build your house right what do you do first actually if you are not an engineer you actually call your architect right or your engineer to actually come up with a plan so you're going to tell the engineer what he or she is going to do so you'll be like okay i'm going to let i want you to build me a four bedroom flat or a duplex so the engineer is going to let's say if he has some catalogs he's going to come up with those catalogs and give it to you and you have to check but if you don't if he doesn't have any of the catalog for you to check on the one he has available you can be able to explain to him right on how you want your house to look like so you you'll be like okay i need a duplex it's going to uh, have let's say six rooms right and it's going to be big and spacious enough so he is going to come up with the plan so that plan actually will be used to create the main building the main house so let's take it like this in this course i'm going to walk you through creating an advanced wireframe which is something similar with let's say uh, using uh, the concept of building your house so let's say the architect comes up with the house plan so we are going to create an advanced wireframe for this website that we are going to work on the real website that we are going to work on and that wireframe will be used to create the real website you got it it's very easy so uh, we we'll create a real rough sketch that we are going to use it to actually design the real website and i'm going to walk you through in this course step by step on how you can be able to do that okay with the use of the advanced wireframe to form the real website okay so uh, just have it in your mind right that we are going to do a rough sketch and you are going to use it to design your main house so after the engineer is done with uh, let's say coming 
uh, up with the uh, let's say plan of the house is going to come up with the finished building now let me show you something right here so this is uh, let's let me take you to this first so these are like the advanced wireframe you are going to form right using the uh, CSS grid okay CSS grid uh, functions and we are going to create something like this now looking at this image we have here it's somehow similar to what the real website looks like all right so these comes in form of rows and columns like we said earlier right and we are going to use some um, css terms or functions to actually create this and this is going to be the real website practical website that we are going to work on so i will show you a practical demonstration on how this is going to be formed and this will be pretty nice so when you look at the old uh, uh, image i showed you right now right here and you look at this you can be able to compare it and you see some are similar just some things are left out those are like this bar this bar and this but the main parts which have to do with the grid uh the css grid which is the more important part that which uh, we did okay so um we'll, we'll just have to replace those grid um with all these items the images the text and what have you so that's all it um i'm going to walk you through in this course and this is how um it's going to look like this is what we are going to use throughout the course of this website right uh, so we are going to design this I'm going to walk you through how we're going to do this all right and you should have no problem um, doing something like this so having said this um, I look forward to actually see you in the course and I can really really wait to meet you in the course it will be very stunning very nice to meet you in the course and having said this bye for now ciao hello guys um steve edex here in this module i'm going to walk you to grid container grid container right um okay let's get started we say grid container contains uh always an html element right it's part of the html element which has to do with the outer part of uh, the container itself right and we also have grid item so uh, just like i said in the introduction we'll walk you through the grid container grid item here i want to talk about the item so let's move into the practical aspect now we are going to create a div right a div tag which would be outside we'll name the class name called container right container you can name it anything you can be like okay since the, we said is the out and path let's name our class name out and we name the inner tag that is inside we name it in right so in okay so let's name this number one now we want to duplicate these uh, items the number of items that is inside the container so with the vs code it's much more easier for you to duplicate it you should use um the shortcut on your on your keyboard and it shifts alternate the arrow down key okay then you can be able to duplicate as many as you want here we are using like five items that would be inside the the item okay all right so 
this five now when we go to our code to run this we will we, we'll see something like this okay so one two three four five now let's add some sort of uh, css to this right and we see how things get to go from there so uh, we are using uh, an embedded css right not inline embedded so it's going to be placed uh, in between the head tag right so let's call this out out give it a display name html element display name to be um, read actually okay uh, we'll give it a background color called uh, let's say um, red yeah red okay make a padding on a different side on the top the left the right the bottom and the every part right is a short cut so let's say we make that 10 pixels all right 10 pixels of padding okay since that is done all right then we can say grid column or um, now let me explain this first if you want to name or number the uh, type of column that will be indicated um, in the grid we use the keyword grid column grid column um, grid column grid row oh shit it should be grid template grid template columns right columns all right now we specify that so we say auto 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 that means we want to give a three column grid okay now we want to actually work with the inner div that is inside the container so how do we do that we'll be like okay we'll say out pointing to every div general in general to actually have a background color of let's say yellow so it has a background color of yellow Okay, has a padding of let's say 10 pixels still. Okay, so let's watch what we're doing and see what we have. So we refresh the page, it looks something like this. Okay, um, if that is said, let's make the font that is inside the container font size, font size. Um, 30 pixels um, font width right font width to be bolder okay nice so we have this right um, also we'll, we'll talk about uh, how stress more these uh, auto 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 you can actually change them to uh, the kind of size you want right you can change them to the kind of size you want we'll get back to that okay but right here we'll give a, a space right so uh, we'll talk about uh, gap gap goals gap goals and uh, gap um 
or they call it. We we have to give a column gap, a column gap right here. Column gap, column gap, and let's say this is ten pixels right there. Right. So when we refresh this, you you see the difference that there's a gap in between here. So right here, this part is uh, actually the the row. This part, Y point in here is um, the column in this grid layout. As a keyword, we have go gap, go gap, and we can name the go gap 10 pixels, right? Okay. Now let's refresh this page and you see the difference. So this is a row gap. So we signify this and we call this a row, a row gap in between. These I'm using my arrow, my uh, cursor to point to. That is a row gap, right? We can extend it to be much more bigger than this. Uh, now let's increase it and let's see the difference. Let's say it has 20 pixels, right? Let's refresh this and you see the difference. You see the, the row gap. The row gap is much more higher than the column gap. If we want to check the difference, let's increase this to let's say 40 pixels and we'll see the difference. So you go here and refresh it and you see the differences. So this one is much more bigger. It's 40 pixels. You see the differences, right? So uh, that is for using the column gaps and the row gap right there. Okay. Um, so we have three columns. So one, two, three. Three columns. If you want to make it to be four columns, just come here and add another one. That makes it to the four. So we'll go here, refresh our page. We have four columns. If you want to make it to the five, and so on and so forth. I, I really do you you really get the point here. Okay. If that has been said, I really think you do get the point. Right? So uh, let's say we want to make this first column much more bigger than every other column. So we'll, let, let's try 100 pixels. Right there. So if we refresh this page, you see the differences. So you see the size. You see the size, the first column, the first column, it's 100 pixels. Let's say we tend to increase it to, let's say, 300 pixels. Get to refresh this page and let's see the differences. You, you see the uh, first column, right? The first column right there, it has been increased to uh, 300 pixels. We can also make changes here also which is the third column. Let's say we we'll make it 200 pixels as well. Okay, go here, refresh the page, and you see the outcome. That is 300 pixels, right? We can also have, so let's clear this. We want to make uh, three columns, three columns right there. Okay, we want to make three columns right there. So uh that is that and you can leave this you can play with this uh on your own after the end of this course this video actually and get to have an understanding of what we're trying to say here okay so that is that now we can also manipulate the rows we talked about the uh grid template columns now we are going to uh, the grid templates rows, right? Um, that is for that grid template rows. Now we can also have as many rows as possible that we want to manipulate in this course, right? So let's say we start with two columns, right? Grid template rows. 
survey with template rules. We refresh this and this is what we have. So that is for that. That is for the rules, right? Let's say we want to make uh, the rule bigger. So uh, this first rule, according to this, this first rule, right? This one, two, one, two, three, that is the first column and one, two, it's uh, two rows that we have there. So let's say we want to increase the second row to let's say 400 pixels, right? And you get to see the differences that we have here. You see, that is for the second column, right? Now, uh, we want to do reverse is the case. The reverse is the case. And we want to make this auto and make these uh, 200 pixels. And there we have it. When you refresh this page, you are going to see the difference. There you have it, right? So, if had it been, we should be able to add a lot of items inside this container, we can be able to also generate a lot of rows that should be inside the container, thereby gives us more chance to increase our rows and column, and thereby we increase it. I hope you get what we are trying to say here, okay? We can increase it, had it been we had uh, a lot of items that should be inside the column, the container, actually. So uh, that is for grid template column, grid template rows, right? Uh, column gaps, row gaps. Now, these column gaps, right? Column gaps, we can actually have a keyword. Instead of writing grid, grid gaps or column gaps actually and row gaps, we can just say gap, right? So the first one holds the row and the second one holds the column, right? So let's say we if we make this 20 pixels of a row gap and the second one will make it 50 pixels of the column gap. Now, let's see the difference that we have here. Now, when you refresh this, this is what you get right now we tend to increase the column to let's say 100 pixels you're going to see the difference right here so we save we refresh you see the column gap has increased we just increase the column gap right here this second one which 100 pixels now we want to increase the row gap to let's say 200 pixels so we save this and we come here and we see the difference okay now that being said let's talk about justifying justifying content properties justifying content properties now uh, you might want to justify uh, this container right or items in the container on the vertical aspect and horizontal aspect now this is how it's been done okay so if we want to do that um, let's say okay uh, we come here and we use the keyword called justify content justify content and we'll start with space even so you can make your content to be space even now for these to be shown on what you're trying to do it's much more advisable to let's say give it a height right to give it a height now we are working horizontally so it's going to make effect 
is going to be effective. So let's say we give it a height of, uh, let's say, uh, 300 pixels, right? Now, this uh, justified content is the horizontal alignment that we know, right? So you see, you can actually give it a height that you want, yeah? There's no need for this. The height, when the height is added here, it's when we want to make an aligned content, which has to do with a vertical uh, justification or a vertical alignment of the item that is in the container. So there will be no need for this, for this height if you want but if uh, you might want to adjust your web content you can actually add it so here i just want to show you the different values that you can be able to use uh, the justify content for so we have space even when you refresh your page this is what we got we have space around space around and when you save this and you refresh this this is what you got space around you have a space that is around surrounded around this uh, container we also have space between space between space between all right Okay, so you refresh your page and you see the outcome. You see, there's a space in between the items that is in the container. Space in between. Now we move further to, let's say, we want to centralize the space and let's see the outcome. All right. Um, okay, so when you refresh your page, this is what you get. There's a space that brought the container to the center, right? Good. Now, guys, for that, we can have stats also. We can have stats. That means you want to take the item to start mostly at the beginning of the surrounded container. We can also take it to the end. So we just come here, we change it and refresh our page and you have it. So we can shift it to the right, shift it to the center, shift it just like we said, start, center, end, right? So we can align this you know, either way we want, okay? It's very much easier to do. To do things that way now we want to move further to let me show you um, align align content which has to do with justifying or aligning the item in a vertical order so um, the value here is align content and here we we'll, we'll make use of the height right Let's say we we'll make this height 300 pixels and let's see the outcome of what we have there. So it's much more smaller. It's much more smaller. Um, let's make this uh, 400 pixels. Let's say. Okay. I think we should make it 600, I guess, to cover all gaps. All right, so this is much more better. And we should reduce the row, the size of the row to, let's say, all two. So everything being equal is going to be on the normal size. All right. All right.
point. So now we want to centralize this right and watch what we have. You see? Horizontally, our item has been moved to the center. See this? Let's change it to, let's say, space evenly. Space evenly. Now refresh this page. It has been aligned space even right we have much more space right here okay this is what we can do with the grid very much interesting isn't it now we can also give space around just like we have uh, for uh, justified content so let's try space around and let's see the outcome but what we have here okay I think it's because of the height. The height is too. You, you can actually play with this and, and see the outcome. Let's say we increase this to 100. Let's see. You see the different nice space around. Let's try space between. Let's see what we have. see space between now let's say we have start I think this is too much let's reduce it so we can you know um, get the drama or see the outcome of what we are working with right okay um, gap rules gap column Let's make this all total. All total. All total. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's make it ten pieces. I guess. So we have the space around. Okay, um, so we have that also, we have that, start, refresh the page, and we'll see, you see, all items went to the beginning at the top, went to the beginning at the top here. Yeah. Is situated around this area to the top. Now let's um, take it to the end, right? So this to the end, okay? Yeah, so it is situated around this area. So it is at the end. Now that is for that, for this module of. Uh, Creating the columns, the rows, using the shortcuts, justifying item, aligning item. If that is being said, let's move into the next module. Thank you. Welcome back, guys. Right now, in this module, I'm going to uh, walk you through the grid item. Just like we've uh, gone through the grid container. We also have the grid item. You know what that means, guys? We have to work within the item. When we have an egg, we, now we have to work with the yolk, the inner part of it, right? How can we manipulate uh, the item that is inside the container? Now, let's quickly move into that, right? So right here, we'll create a div tag, right? Um, we call this, at first we call it 
out right so this is the outer container and we'll create uh, the inner item and we'll call this item item one it's it's very important that we need it um, according to their numbers right it should be it should not be in a generic form when you want to um, actually select this item in a generic form you use the div right and that is being said uh, when you are going through your tutorial for HTML CSS basic class right but right here we want to name this so it can be unique on its own remember we are dealing with the item I'm going to show you in this uh, section why we name this item right so it can be unique uh, distinctively okay so this is item one so like I said we duplicate this let's say we make this 10 I guess okay 10 item so change it to three four five six seven eight nine and ten right we change here as well All right, so we have our Alton container. That's why we named it out over here. And we have the item that is inside of the container, which we have from item one to 10, right? Now we'll come over to the uh, CSS part and let's try to uh, modify our container. So first, when we refresh this page, this is what we are going to get initially, All right? Now let's beautify this as quick as possible. So we say out, right? We'll give the display to the read. Read, actually. We'll make the padding to be, let's say, 10 pixels. You can change change it to whatever number you want okay uh, i just using 10 pixels for this you give it a background color of any kind of your choice okay here let's say we make this um, i kind of let's choose background okay um we'll give it a gap of let's say 10 pixels on the row land the column now we want to modify the item itself so in a generic form we use the div class now we give it a background color of let's say um let's say blue violet uh, we give font size of let's say 20 pixels 20 pixels right we align the text to center okay now when we run this this is what we are going to have right we can start manipulating it from here Okay. Now these are uh, these contain the child class is the parent, the outer. Now you can easily call it an outer container or a parent container. This is the child container for the CSS manipulation, right? This is the outer container. This the open tag, close tag. 
the child's container that is inside of it, right? Now we can't start to manipulate it, right? So uh, if we want to manipulate it, we'll, we'll go this way and we'll say, uh, um, dot, let's work with item one at first. So item one, it's green column, right? Grid column, and inside this grid column will be like it should start from column one, right? Slash, and it should spam three, three columns. Remember, we made mention of um, some sort of items inside the container, right? In the last module, we talk about the grid container dealing with the outer parts of the grid. Now we want to talk about dealing in the internal part, the child element. Now we are saying it should start from container one, I say container, sorry, column one, and it should be able to spam three parts, right? And this should be situated, it should be found around rule two. Now you see the changes, how this changes or how it varies, okay? Now when we run this, this is what we got. Now we said that um, this should start from item one, which is this, right? This item one. That is why we we say we should make this unique item one, item two, item three. Had it been we made it uh, item, we made it same name. We don't really know which item or the item inside the container that we are actually working with, okay? So that's why I said we should give it different names. The number makes it to be unique so we can be able to manipulate it individually, right? And we said that in item one, right, the grid column should start from column one and it should spam three places. And this should be in row two, right? So we have the item one here, okay? And it should spam three places and it should be found in row two. Row one, row, row one, row two, row three, four, five, six. Column one, column two, right? That being said, good. All right. Now, let's try something. Let's work on, on the item, right? Okay, let's say something far from the item four. We say green column, right? It should start from column two, actually, and it should be able to start from column two. Right, and it should be able to join, um, or like let's say, uh, four columns, and it should be situated around uh, row, row, five, row five. Okay, it should be situated around row five. Now, when we refresh our page, this is what we got. If you do your calculation very well, you find out it's uh, row five, and it's it was able to spam uh, four places, and that is the change is there. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. That being said, let's uh try this. Okay. Let's say we have, let's cancel this for now. We want to deal with lines, 
right? We want to deal with lines, grid lines. Now, remember what we said in uh, the last module? We can actually say uh, give a grid, a grid color, right? For the items that is inside the container. So we say grid template columns. It should be auto, auto, and auto. All right. And auto. Now, refresh this. This will we get. We have three, we have three uh, columns. Let's make it four. So it should be balance with every other items in the container. Okay. So, these four. We want to let it start from line one. So we come here and we say now the grid column, like we said, it's like a shortcut. You either say when you want to use this on a long form, you say grid column start. Right? You can say grid column start from some part and it should end in another part right but we are using the short form now you can either say this uh, we let's say in item one right here item one you can use any item to actually uh, play with it and see the outcome and you will tend to get the understanding of what we are trying to do here remember you have to practice as i am uh, taking you on this course you also have to put your hands on deck and do what i'm doing so you can be able to get a proper understanding or practical understanding of what i'm trying to do right here okay so we say we uh column it should start at line one and it should end in line three. And when you come here, you refresh it. This is what we got line one, line one, and line three. So one, two. Get it? Remember, I said the shortcut is read column. Read column. Here we said it should start in line one and end in line three. Combination of read column start and read column end. But this will make your code to be bulky. So it's better to, when you use the read column start, it makes your code. To be bulky and use your grid column end it make your codes to be bulky right you have a lot more code right there so it's preferable that you use uh, the short hand right when you want to manipulate something like this you want to deal with something like this it's better to use this way to use it this way actually okay to use the grid column right you can either say this go as well. Let's say you want to start from line two and will end in line four. And let's see the outcome. Okay. Now this is what we have. So it starts at line two and it ends in line four. So line one, two, three, four. It ends and it starts in line two. Right? Now Nevertheless, you can also add your grid row, grid row, grid row stats, right, in or at line one, and it should end in line two. Grid row and in line two. Watch the outcome of this. When you refresh your page, is what you're able to get, right? Okay, 
So when you do the calculation, you see where these these changes it's been done, and the short cut is read rule. It should end start with line one, end in line two. That is it, right? So that have to do with manipulating the roll part of this, right? So we either have roll, and we either have we also have the column as well. Okay, you can use it in the long form, and you can use it on the short form, right? To make your code to be less bulky, right? Okay, let's move on. Now you, you can also spam uh, different item that you have in the container, right? All right, so let's say we have this over here, right? We want to spam one with two, right? So let's do this. Now we will refer to item one actually, right? And we'll come here, we we'll say read column, okay, read column, and we say start from column one, right, and spam two. Alright, now watch what's going to happen. You see? You see the changes right there? Yeah, that, that, that is how you do it. That is how you do it. Now let's say we want to spam from item 8 true. Okay. Okay, so let's say item 8. Item 8 over there. So we call um, or uh, start from row, row, let's say row 3 and spam tree. Now let's see the outcome. Right, you see this spam tree areas. If you want to say you, you say it should be situated around uh, row row four. Let's see. See this? Just increase it, and you see it's going to take the time part of it. See this? See this? This can be your footer, right? This can be your footer when you are designing your website. This can be your footer, right? Yes. Um, that is for that. So we talked about the grid column rules, grid column, uh, grid column, right? Uh, Let's move further to read read uh, area. Now you may want to let's say manipulate the column and the row at the same time, right? CSS have a way of let's say using a shortcut to manipulate row differently distinctively and color on a different level and you can also match this together to actually create something okay like i said to make your work to be less bulky your code to be less bulky so let's get into that and let me show you how you can be able to let's say combine the column and the row together to actually uh, form your grid okay now let's say we are working with grid one let's cancel this for now grid one so we, we 
we'll come here and we say grid area. Now, pay attention. This, if we say it should start in goal one slash back, uh, backslash, it should start in column two backslash. It should spam two places backslash on the roll end area and it should spam three places on the column area. Now I really want to stress this. This is somehow tactical, right? Now when you want to manipulate the grid column and the grid row you would give this keyword, use this keyword, you say grid area. Now this site stands for the grid column stat and it shows where it's going to spam on the row. Why this part, which is two, two over here, it shows the grid row stat, where it's going to start and how many is going to spam. Right now, having said that, let's run our web page. And you see the outcome. You see, you see, it was able to start at rule one, right? And it spun two areas on rule one over here, here, and here. Spun two areas on rule one. And we said here on the column two, actually, column two. Uh, this is go one, two, three, four. Column one, column one, two, three, four. So we said that it should start from uh, column two, column two, actually, right? Column two, over here, over here, this, this. Right, and it should be able to spam three places, and that is what we have here. Right now, either way, we can say it should start in column one, spam three areas, and we say I should start in uh, uh sorry, this should be it should start in row one, spam three areas, it should start in column one and spam three areas uh, let's see the outcome watch this so this is the opposite of this so we, we are able to spam this you get this hope you get that uh, i really want to stress on it that you really understand what we are doing here we are trying to join the grid column and the grid row on one code Right, so this is very technical. It's very much advisable that when you want to form uh, the layer you intend to make when you're creating your web page, just like a wireframe, you should be able to draw a rough sketch and do the calculation, identifying each rows and column, and then should be able to write the code right that will give you a much more understanding of what you're trying to do okay instead of let's say uh, guessing on which row to start which row to end it's going to really take your time and thereby you are going to waste a uh, much more precious time to guess which area to manipulate for so it is very much better to do a rough sketch okay on uh, your a paper or you can draw it with uh, let's say some paint application or thereabouts okay before you start uh, to writing your code it's very much advisable that way it will give you a clear understanding of what you're trying to do right Having said that, um, 
lastly I'm going to mention the last part in this grid item which have to do with the naming so you can be able to name your items so let's cancel this right so when you want to name your item this is what you do so first of all you work with the uh, the item you want to work with let's say now I want to work with item 4 now we'll give it a key name this key value which is grid area grid area and this grid area let's say we name this uh, John right this is the grid area name that okay so let's cancel this just watch what we are trying to do here and you, you tend to understand very quick so here we said uh, grid template um, areas now if we want to span a different rule or a different column right we are going to work it this way we will uh, use a single quote not double quote single quote right here and we will be able to give the number of columns we want um, these to span with the name that is specified here and we say that grid area is um, specified as John and we'll come in the container part and we'll refer this to grid template area and we'll say John 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 right which means we want to create three columns with the name specified John as a grid name okay good nice now when we run this this is what we're going to get you see you discover that um, we span three areas one two three on the norm right one two three one column two column the third column and right here we say we want to span the three areas that is why we named it John and we refer this to grid template area John 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 let's say we want to span from item 8 right here okay that is it for us to do item 8 right here and we'll give it a name grid area and right here we call it let's say telephone right like we did here we'll come here and we say grid template area grid template areas should be telephone 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 right now let's go on our web page and you see this okay telephone 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 we have this spam over here let's try to think is this you see you see it's more than that let's do it two more and let's see what we have there telephone 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 so one two three four five six six columns you see 
now this cannot be able to spam here because it's in the container john is also sharing the resources that is why um, this cannot be spam completely okay now, that being said let's say we want to give a space so watch this when you want to give space it is denoted by a three dots just like this on each column and you say telephone come over here and refresh this and this is what we have all right this is what we have So that is how we can be able to name our, um, um, let's say, the grid templates. Okay. We started from grid column, rows, grid column, areas um, for the renaming. When you want to give it any name, and you start manipulating on columns, right? You can also do it this way too. Let's let us let us try something different. Let's uh, span the row. Since we have spanned the columns, let's try to span the row. So let's say um, this is item one, actually, and let's say this item two. Grid area record is what. So item one, John, 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 and uh, rat, rat. That's what. You see this? This was spanned. Let's try on another one. I believe you get the point. You see this? Let's try something different. Let's spam on another one. Okay. Name this green area. Troop. All right. We come over here and we say green and green area. Should be all right. This is what we need to do. John. Watch this. You see, the rule is being spawned. Now watch this one without troop. 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 Watch this. You see. All right. Now. That is being said, right? So um, you should play with this and um, try to understand the concept, just like I have said. In the next part, we are going to 
work with a real life grid layout, right? A real life grid layout that we are going to use to create the website. Now uh, we have worked, I've worked through uh, with you on how we can be able to use the grid container, the grid item, right? In um, the next part, we'll make a real life grid wireframe, right? That we are going to use to create the real project for this course, right? Having said that, let's move directly to the next chapter. Welcome back in this course. All right, guys, um, there's something I missed out um, when I was going through the grid container, right? And this is very much important. This is something I have discovered when I tend to uh, do some sort of coding, right? And it's nested, nested grid container alongside with the item itself, all right? So let's get started. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Right now, we would like to create. Uh, actually, what is a nested grid container? It's like having a grid inside a grid inside a grid. As many grid as you want, right? You can actually create it for yourself. Now let's move into it. Okay. So we create a div here and we call this mm, container. Okay. Uh, so we name this one. We duplicate this. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay. Let's create the first div, the first outer div first. Okay. Create another div that will be inside this one, pointing to this, right? And we call this in. So we'll number this one. So let's say four. So two, three. Right here. So work on our CSS right here. So we'll say container right in div. Right. So we give it a display of since we are working with grid, we give it a display called grid. Right. We give padding right of 10 pixels. Of 10 pixels, uh, grid templates column, columns, right? Uh, okay. We make this three actually. You can make it as many as you want. Then we give it a gap, row gap, column gap of 10 pixels each. Okay. Right. Now we would have to work with the inner, the inner item that is outside this grid. This inner item that is outside this grid, so it can be visible. If you should run this code, uh, you see what you get. Here. You see, this is what you just get. But we want to actually color the outside container and also inside the grid itself. So we give it a color. We say background color should be let's say red right good so refresh this and it will get something wrong here okay all right so refresh this yes and this is what you get so we want to work with the inner item see the differences that we have there so having done that you say uh, container right in 
to all the items generically. So give it a background color of let's say blue. Right? Good. Give it a padding of let's say um, 10 pixels. Right? Okay. Alright, so when we refresh this, this is what we get. Alright, there's something wrong somewhere. Trying to figure it out. Alright. So, this should be. Uh, this one. This can be the, this more of like the advanced, so you have to be very careful to think about what you're doing. Okay, so this is pointing to this. This is pointing to this. Okay, okay, I, I discovered the problem. Okay, alright. So, when we run this, yes, this will work. Is very practical, right? It's the advanced stage, so you have to be very careful on what you are doing, so you don't make mistakes. I tend to understand what you are working on. So this for the first grid. This outside container is pointing to this container, right? This is first level grid, right? And we have this. So this is the outside container with the red background pointing to this item. Right, which is the item that is inside of it. Right, let's uh, make this two more, so it's going to be complete. Right, good. Now, when we run this, this should be completed. There. Don't want to give any gaps. Good. Now we want to work with the second level. Grid, right so we said a grid inside a grid inside a grid inside a grid right so we want to work with the second level grid let's do it is something similar right but uh, you're having a grid inside a grid inside a grid is a nested grid so what do we do here we form another tag and let's call this cut okay cut and this card is called fly. So let's duplicate this. Should be three. Fly, fly, fly. Good. We come here, we do the same thing. Right. All right. So we call this uh, plus cut so fly fly so duplicate this to the places we you just get the point just copy this right and you replicate the same procedure you have done there okay all right do this This right, good, right. Uh, so when we run this, this is what we have here, right. So we want to form another grid that's inside here, right. So we say the first one, like we did, I told you similar, we say in and we give it a display of grid. Right, give it the padding called 10 pixels. Padding of 10 pixels. Um, what next? Read templates columns. Right, say auto, auto. You can give it as much as as many as you want. Okay, uh, so that is for that. Give it a gap of let's say. 10 pixels, you can give it anything you want. Okay. So when we run this, it's going to be like this, right? 
so we want to work with the inner grid that is inside which has to do with fly so what do we do we say in points into the div which are named cat right and we give it a background color of let's say white okay okay give it a background color say white give it a padding of say right 10 pixels okay uh, so when you refresh this is what you get you see this a grid inside a grid inside a grid inside a grid now I would like you to go and uh, try your hands right like they say get your hands dirty Get your hands dirty, get your hands on practical, and I want you to do, let's say, a five level grid on your own to test what we have done, right? So you get the point when we talk about the nested, the, the nested grid, having a grid inside a grid. And having done that, you can as well play with your code and some of the concepts and the keyword we have used uh, under uh, grid container and grid item you can also add it here and play with it i hope you enjoyed this video right please i would really want your um your honest review on this my course please i have really worked hard right to uh, come up with this course and it just take time the only way i can be able to be rewarded for the hard work i've put into this course is to get uh, your honest review right and your ratings right i will really love for to receive your honest review and your ratings please it's really helped my course to go thank you and we'll move into the next module right thank you guys I hope you enjoyed this video. Ciao. Hello guys, Steve Adex here. In this module, we are going to talk about uh, building a wireframe, right? For the website we are going to build, which will be the final project. Now, in the last uh, previous videos, we have gone through the introduction of um, grid layout we've gone through uh, concepts like grid container grid items the alignment justifications you know and what have you right right here we want to let's say practice uh, what we've learned over the few previous videos that we have done and we want to see how this works when we want to build our website so pay very attentive pay attention here as we will try to let's say go into a more advanced concept in here okay we are going to talk more advanced now like i said before if if you want to let's say build a house right you would first come up with the plan of the house get your architect to let's say make the plan of the house right to build the plan to the house you want to build and from that plan you give it to your engineer to uh, continue from there and build the house completely to its taste that you want the house to look like now what we are about to do right now is somewhat like a plan that we are going to use to build the main website the main house all right so pay very attention because we are about to start now without further ado let's get started now you all know um, 
V, I don't know. I'm using VX code, Visual Studio code, right? As the text editor to um, write this project, okay? So, um, for the beginner aspect, most times I use the shortcut to actually create um, or to write my code. So, if you don't know much about the VS code or shortcut, you can, let's say, make some research about it. Now, how we came about these environments right here, you, let me show you how it's been done. So let's say we take this off. Now, with the VS code, it is very much easier for you to, let's say, write your code, makes it very faster to write your code instead of using the notepad, right? or notepad plus plus it's very very handy right to make use of vs code when writing your code okay so let's say if you want to bring back what we have deleted before just say shift then follow by uh, this character there and you say you select the first one you press enter everything will come back to normal now let's get started uh, in here we'll be using some sort of um, embedded css you know we have external we have internal embedded css to be it, it will be much more faster right for you to write uh, our code somehow so um, Without further ado, let's get started. Now, we'll start with uh, this tag. We'll create a div tag here, which opens and close, right? And we name this tag uh, main zero outer, main zero outer. Okay, give it a style to be wheat. All right. So it's a mixture of uh, embedded and internal CSS also, or inline CSS actually. So 100 pixels right here for the size of these right okay so we'll terminate it over here we we'll create another div class which will be inside the outer container let's name this um we name this main one okay inside of this we we'll create our items that will be inside we'll name this uh, item one all right we'll give it let's say we we'll give it a height of uh let's say we'll give it a height of so we'll make a star there actually Make it four fifty pixels. 50 pixels right and we'll call this one okay we'll repeat this samely here we'll call this class we'll call this item to give it a height of let's say okay. 
give it a height of let's say um 200 pixels all right we repeat the same thing make sure you are doing this as well so you get the real picture of what we are trying to do right here right you should as they say you should get your hands dirty you should get your hands dirty and uh, hang up to your computer hang on to your computer and uh, let's start coding right um 200 pixels as well terminate it yeah. height of let's say 239 pixels all right 239 pixels make this four four okay give it another teeth Item five. Oh shit! Something wrong here. Item. Item five. Actually, and the star make it a height of let's say two thirty nine. Two thirty nine pixels. is for five um and lastly we'll create another item which will be six um all right so item six give it this style of let's see Sixty pixels. Pixel. Okay. Make a margin of um, bottom um, margin. Bottom should be fifty pixels, right? Um, the margin. Remember, a margin is a space that is giving. Around the outer container, right? Why the padding is opposite, right? It's inside, but the margin is outside. So we are saying here that margin bottom should be fifty uh, fifty pixels, right? Down, right? Okay. Uh, six. Right, so when we go here and we run our code, this is what we'll get. This is what we'll get. Now let's work on the CSS and see for ourselves. Okay, so we'll come here, right, and we'll create a style tag. Actually, uh, wait. When that is created, we we'll work with it. Uh, we say main one, the class name, which we have here. 
hides this, this, which we have there. And let's do some changes. So give it a display, just like I said. So give it a display called grid, right? Background color, let's use the background color of the yellow yellow right good um give it a height the height which is that of the background and we'll give it 600 pixels right um the padding let's make it um Five pixels, five pixels. The width, right, should be one thousand two hundred pixels. Margin should be, let's say, auto. Okay. Grid would be. 200 pixels um 200 pixels auto no all right now we'll create um a four column size so auto 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 four column in numbers now I'll give it a gap of let's say 10 pixels right and 10 pixels on each side now remember what we said uh, during the section where we talked about uh, the grid container now we are working with grid right here right so in that case we say display is grid background color should be yellow give it a height of this color to enclose the grid, the items that is inside the grid. So we should make the height to be 600 pixels. We should make the padding within the container, right, which is holding the item to be five pixels. Then uh, here, remember this is the outer part of the container, right? The most outer part of the container, the container. That's why I named it main zero outer right so we gave it a style of let's say 100 pixels why did we give it a style of let's say 100 pixels now the outer container is 100 pixels right so it should have a width of uh, let's say 100 pixels right there which elapses um, from the outer container and right here we said the width should be 1200 pixels why is that so so that and, and, and we are also going to do same when it comes to this uh, width and that of this you understand to make every grid item to be aligned right i'm going to show you you you, you tend to understand what we are trying to do here right these are uh, hundred pixels sorry um 100 percent right should be the outer width right and this one should be uh 1200 and we're also going to repeat it for other grid right which makes it to be 1200 i really uh hope you get the point okay i really want to stress on this to make sure you understand you get to understand when we go on the web page and you see what we're trying to do there. Now, the margin we should make it auto, right? We want to make it auto. Right? Remember, we said the margin is a space that is done outside the container. So, we we'll make it auto that it should uh, be given a space that is equal at the top, at the right, the bottom, and the left, right? yes that that is what we, we need to do make it uh, on the same space on the same size to the top the right the left the bottom okay and we will talk more of like the grid 
right? So we, we said here, it's more of like uh, you creating, when we say auto, this area, we, we are talking about the number of the columns that we want to give. So uh, we say the item that is inside the container should have four columns, which is auto one, two, three, four. And here have to do with the rows. So we are saying we, we can as well give it the same uh, size, but since we are trying to create uh, a website, right? We are coming up with the plan, a wireframe of what we are trying to do. That is why we said that this should be 200 pixels, the first row, 200 pixels, second row, and for the third row, it should have the same size, which is default. That is why we say auto, right? Now, this is shortcut for uh, manipulating this. I really hope you understand. Then for the gap, the gap has to do with uh, the, 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 the row space and the column space. So this first one holds, uh, this first one right here, it holds the row space, right? So the row space should be, let's say, 10 pixels, right, of space right there. And the second one, which is this, should have uh, 10 pixels, which should be the column space, right? So having said that, let's go on our web page and let's see what we have here. Now, uh, it looks something like this, all right? It looks like this currently. So let's continue with the code. Um, don't forget to terminate this. Okay. All right. Fine. So we come here, we say item one. Okay, item one should have a grid area, which is the shortcut of, let's say, one, span two, and span three. What does this mean? It means that we selecting item one, we should use the shortcut that, uh, we want to span on the item one area we want to span go two places span two places and uh, on the row and span three places on the column now you should be very very careful when you are writing the code if you do something like this it's not going to work right it's not going to work and you might be thinking, but I have everything okay there. Why is this not working? It's, it's always like that in, in coding, right? So you should be very careful. You should give it a space. It should be separated. If it's joined there, it's not going to work. So um, that's for that. So we are saying that uh, on the item one, it should, on the line one, it should span two places on the row and span that is join a, a grid item three places right that's what we are trying to say good now let's move further to item six item six okay so grid area grid area on line six we want it to span four, span four, right there. Good. Uh, main one, main one, we want to concentrate on all the grid items that is inside main one. We'll give it the background color of, let's say red, Okay, background color of red and padding of oh, five pixels. Five pixels, 
right there. So when we run our code, this is what we are going to get. You see? You see? You see this? Right? This is what we, we have. And with this, you can... Okay, there's something left. We need to give a space here. So... We actually need to work with our goal gap. So let's come here and let's say we give it a space of, let's say, 15 pixels. Okay. Refresh our page. Okay. We have something there. So 15 pixels. Let's make it, let's make it bigger, right? Let's see 20 pixels. 20 pixels. Uh, refresh our page now this is the first grid that we are working on you see this you see you, you see the, the magic with grid grid layout right right here you can be able to put your items inside each and every one of these item right inside every one of this inside of you know you, you, I really hope you get what I'm trying to do. Okay, so that is for that. Now we'll move to the second grid. Alright? We'll move to the second grid. Now, in at the second grid, we create a tag right here. And we name this tag... Uh, we name this tag main main to outer give it a style give it a style of width 100 pixels oh shit sure. 100 pixels Right inside of it, we we'll give it uh, give another div name this div uh, main main two right and now we will deal with the items that is inside of it. Okay, let's name this. Inner one, all right. We'll call this one. Now you can just duplicate this uh, this line you seen here, right? With the use of the VS Code, you have a shortcut to do this. Just press on your keyboard, Shift, Alternate, Arrow down key, it duplicate. But I really want to, you know. Uh, make this very comprehensive. I don't want to rush this video. I really want you to get what we are trying to do here. All right. Really, it's, it's nice. Nobody, nobody, nobody is really talking about this. I kind of from my years of experience as a web developer, I tend to, let's say, come up with this concept and, you know, apply it to um, my knowledge on how I can be able to develop a, a website with the use of the grid, right? The grid, the grid layout. So, um, this is very handy. This is a very handy approach. All right, so. Inner 
in a six. Now in this in a six, we'll give it a style, right? Whose uh, which height is uh, okay? Uh, five hundred pixels. Um, five hundred pixels. Um, five. All right. So, oh, and right here we'll give it a style having the height of let's say um um hundred pixels to these six all right that being said when we come here and we're going this we'll be having this all right now let's work with our CSS area and see what we have there. Okay. So main to display should be grid. Background color, background color should be purple. Let's use purple color. You can use whatever color you want, right? It's just a proof of concept. We, you can use whatever color you want. We just want to, um, I just want to show the concept of using grid to create a layout, so some sort of wireframe right you can use any concept you want so we'll make the height same way with the first grid we'll make the height to be let's say 600 pixels still pardon all right should be five pixels One thousand two hundred pixels. Margin should be auto, right? Auto. Grid. Uh, fifty pixel. Let's make it two hundred pixels. Auto. Auto, auto, right there. Give it a gap of, let's say, uh, um, 10 pixels and uh, 10 pixels. Let's try this. Uh, we're going to code and see what we have here. Now, when we run our code, this is what we have here, right there, right? Okay, so let's go back to what we are doing and continue. Okay. Main, main to give. So we give it the background color of let's say, um. See, yeah, like I said, you can use any background color you wish to use. Give it a padding of let's say five pixels. All right, five pixels in a one, in a one, grid color. So you should start from column one, and from that column one, you should span two areas. 
two items actually okay when we run this this is what we have here good all right so we are not done yet we say it should span this area so we come to item six item six mm. all right first of all let's come to inner 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 two or oh. Three, actually, we give it a grid row of two span two, and this should be situated around grid column one. Right. In a four grid row, grid row two span two. All right, now I'll, I'll explain this to you. Right, I'll explain this to you. You, you, you tend to understand what we are trying to do here. Okay. Two. Okay. Uh, we want to deal with um, the inner, the inner six, inner six. Grid row should be to span to span to all right and it should be situated around three column three. Let's work with in a seven, right? And grid row should be let's say three, right? Grid column should be three, right? We close this and let's go now code and see what we have here now you see this we really have to uh, extend uh, the height the height here so we'll go right here and we'll make our height to be uh, to be way bigger than what we have there. Okay. All right, so make the height here to be 200 pixels and here we we'll make the height to be 150 pixels because we have a plan of what we want to do so we should make everything to be okay so it will be pretty nice on what we're trying to achieve there all right that being said and uh, everything put in place 
okay let's go to our CSS and check what we have there all right let's make this let's say 20 pixels and then and good good okay all right Right, one span two. Okay, all right so this is what we want to achieve right this is what we intend to achieve okay that is what we intend to achieve now let me explain something here on so this area is the first grid and this area over here start from here enter is the second grid so this is the outer container which have a width of let's say 100 pixels now remember what i said at the first grid we make the outer container to be um, 100 pixels wide right is hold, holding 100 pieces width to be wide now we'll come here and and we gave this width 1200 pixels why did we do so so it can be in alignment it can align you see this grid stays the same way the same line with this it stays the same line with this if we don't do that to uh, make the outer grid 100 pixels then the other one to be the same as the first grid that we have it's going to make our websites to be scattered right and it's not professional to do something like that that is why we really made it to be that way all right that is very handy make sure you take notes whenever you are developing a website now we have the another uh, container which holds the item so we have item uh, one to six which have their different names because we might want to manipulate each name distinctively right to make it unique that's why we give it this number right and we give it a height of let's say 200 pixels on inner item 5 and a height of 150 pixels on inner item 6 right now that being said we came here actually like what we did in the first item we said that the display should be grid. The background color should have a color purple, right? And the height of, let's say, 600 pixels. Padding should be 5 pixels. Width should be 1,200 pixels. Um, 
I will explain that. Then the margin should be auto, same way. Now, the grid here, we said we are working with a three column grid, a three column, right? So we give it auto, auto, auto on this. So one, two, three, three columns. One, right here, two, right here, three, right there. Fine. And we said that we want to make uh, two rows. So the first goal, we made it uh, 50 pixels, right, high. And we made the second, we made the second roll to be 200 pixels high. And that is what we have there, which is this, right? One, two, two, good. Now we give it a gap of 20 pixels at the row area and 10 pixels at the column area now we said that div 2 which is the outer container should work generally into the item that is inside the container now we've given it a background color to have let's say cyan right so it can be visible that we are really working with um, the item itself so the background color that we have for the container should be distinctive from the background color that we have for the item that is inside the container. And we give it a padding of five pixels at the inner side. Now, like I said, that is why we named the item distinctively. So right here, we want to work with item one, right there. So we are seeing that item one. So we are using the long form. We say grid column should start on line one, column line one, and it should span two items within that area. And that is what we have here. Okay, good. And in the same way, we say in a three, we should have a grid column, a grid row of that should be found in column one. It should be situated, placed in column one. It should start from row line two and it should span two areas right there. And that is what we have here. At the same time, way we did that with this on item four we should start in the going uh, grid row two and it should span two area and it should be situated around column two and that's what we have here you get the point and last um second to the last we have the inner six we say should have a grid row that should uh, be in a row three and it should be able to span two two places when you check it we have it four four six right and for seven will be a different ball game grid should be situated around three and that is the grid row, and for the grid column, it should be situated around three on item seven. Okay, the code C continues. Now, let's move further to item three. So, we'll go back to our HTML area. So, we would Start with the HTML area three. So create an outer div. Let's call this main three. Main three outer. All right. Star. Star width 
100 pixels terminate it div create another div that should be inside of it all right take out the low battery let me try this Okay, okay, okay. Main three. That will be the name. Okay. So this close this and this. Open here and close this. Good. Now we'll work with the item that should be inside the container. And we'll give this the name flat three. Okay, flat one. Let's start with one. <laughs> Let's not be in a hurry. We'll give this a style. Say have a height of three hundred pixels. Three hundred pixels one. Good div flat to star give it a height of let's say three hundred pixels also. This will be two. class flat 3 give it a star of the height 60 pixels okay leave Give it a class name of flat four with style which have a height of hundred pixel. Six. Give it a height of say four hundred pixels. Terminate it over there. Mm. So this is six, right? Uh, give this a height. Um, we name this seven. Have a style, say height, hundred pixels. Seven. Flat. 
plot eight. Always start of height. Hundred pixels. Hundred pixels. Right? Okay. If that is being done, let's go to the CSS and work with it there. So we come over here, CSS, and we actually want to work with what we have there on main main four main three actually okay what do we have here is it main three main four main what okay main three so main three main three so main three you say main three and three open and close. We make the display to be a grid. So display is going to be grid. Background color should be black. Should have a height of let's say um uh, six hundred pixels. 600 pixels, the padding of let's say uh, uh, let's use five pixels, I guess so. Then the same way with make sure that every thing is in shape is on the same line. Have a margin of auto, auto, and grid. We we'll make this auto, auto. We we'll make this auto, auto, auto. Right. We give it a gap of let's say ten pixels. Ten pixels. Right there. Not done yet. Not done yet, actually. So we come over here and we say so main three. Main three. We want to specify that uh, the item that is under main three, all of them. Generically, that's why we use div, right? So, give it a background color of let's say yellow. Also, no, let's use something orange, different. So it can be able to differentiate the first grid from this grid, right? We should use different colors to separate it, right there. Okay, so let's go to our code and run what we have there. All right, this is what we have here. Right, good. But we, um, since we have this height to be 600 pixels, and this is way higher than what we have as the height. Yeah. So in that case, we we'll have to do some kind of movement. So we'll go to the HTML code and let's say we we move it, right? So we'll come over here to the HTML code. Uh, all right. So come over here, over here, and we would do this, right? Give it position, 
we'll call this relative all right oh first of all would would uh give it a star on that and position should be relative, relative. right now from the bottom like we want to push this up over there so what do we do from the bottom we'll push it right and let's say 200 pixels 200 pixels from the bottom to push it up so when we come here All right, so it went a little bit up there. Uh, okay, so I think we should increase it to let's say two forty, two forty pixels. Oh, we are doing it. On the wrong side. Oh, oops. We are doing it on the wrong side. It should be along three, not here. It should be along this area. You really need to be careful with the way you are writing your code, really, because it's, it's not going to work. I'm going to leave this uh, source code in the resource area, right? Below this video, below this video, I'm going to leave this source code right there. So you can be able to cross check from what we are doing here, right? So that'll be it. Um, so I uh, will make the position to be, let's say relative. Uh, style okay this we have a style there already we have a style there already. so just put position right there and make it related terminate it remember bottom we should make it uh, 200 pixels first and let's see the outcome so when we run our code this is what we have it's left with a little bit so we should let's say make it 40 and let's see the outcome it's much more better isn't it now it's left with this 7 and 8 over there so what we have to do we have to do the same thing to push it up 7 and 8 so we come here and we say position um, relative um, position relative the bottom at the bottom right should be let's say 200 pixels let's try 200 pixels and see the outcome of what we have there. So this went up we need to take it higher let's make it 300 let's see if it okay okay all right i think this is way better right now we should do the same thing since we actually want uh seven and eight to be on the same line all we need to do um is to also write this right right uh, so relative relative bottom 300 pixels good 300 pixels right and refresh this and this is what we have good so we have it it's perfect it's perfect nice 
So let's go to our CSS and see what we are trying to achieve there. Please, if you have any question and answer, uh, let me know in the Q&A section. In this course, there's, uh, I've made it available for some students who have some issue with the course. You should uh, let me know in the Q&A section and I'll uh, give you a response as fast as possible based on when I see it. All right, so this uh, for the uh, main three, the grid three container. So we say that the display should be grid over there. Background color should be black. That's what we have there when you check the code. Have a height of, let's say, 600 pixels. Padding should be five pixels outside the container, right? Not um, um, the item itself, not inside the item. It should be outside the container. Now we'll make the width to the 1,200 pixels. Remember I said that it should be in line with other grid that we are making, right? So everything should be in alignment when we are creating a website. Then the margin should be auto. The top, the left, the bottom, the right. It should be auto, right? On the same size. Now right here we say that the, the, the this whole row slash this whole column. So we want to make three columns, three number columns. So one, two, three. And the row should be two, which is one, two. Now, right here, we are not giving it any number right there, okay? So, we say that it should have a default size, which should be auto for both rows and column. Right here holds the row, and right here holds the column. Give it a gap of, let's say, 10 pixels, 10 pixels. 10 pixels on the row, and 10 pixels at the column now we say that the um, the main three which has to be the container should face direction to all the items now when you want to specify that you want to make an arrangement to make um, let's say a change to every item we use div instead of using flat one, flat two, flat three specifically, we want to make sure that every item that is inside the div, we can be able to manipulate it. That's why we use div right there. So we should make the background color should be orange, and that is why the background color is orange, and the padding of uh, five pixels. That's what we have there. And that you have this over here right i really want to stress on this part so you tend to understand what we are able to do this is the advanced level you should take this uh, you should take this slowly you can go the uh, you can go over the video over and over again to you really get the concepts you really get the point of what we are trying to do here okay now this is very handy now let's go to um the for uh creating uh grid four actually grid four so we create a div right there we name this div let's say main main outer right main outer and give it a style called mm, give it a style with the width 100 pixels just like i said good create another div inside of this okay mm. okay so main four Okay, 
div with the class name story <laughs> so you can give it any name you want as far as you understand what you are doing so right here i'm giving it story one story this should be story two story two right good story two uh the class story three now let's make this fast is up to we want to create a uh, nine nine item so let's make this very fast four five six seven eight nine all right so this should be four five six seven eight nine good having done that let's move to our css part of it okay okay all right so main for main for we will make the display to be grid all right give it a background color of let's say this let's say black over there with the height mm, 600 pixels padding 5 pixels um, width should have 1200 pixels right uh, margin margin should be auto grid should be auto auto on the wall and on the column auto three uh, columns actually auto the gap space of 10 pixels 10 pixels right cool and the main four should point towards this have a background color of um, we'll figure out a color which is not um, there okay 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 i think this will be better okay it's somehow different from what we have there and we give a padding of let's say five pixels all right five pixels okay so we want to make uh this is what we have over here when we run our code good nice you see you see this yes so we want to manipulate this and see what we have here right so this is grid one grid two grid three and lastly grid four so let's work with this based on the website we are going to create now first thing first we want to work with uh, the item one which is story one 
and right there we would say grid area on one row one column one it should be able to span two places two items and this this means from row one it should be able to spam two items from column one it should be able to spam two places spam two places actually all right so let's go to the html and see what we have there so this is what we have good and this is what we we'll use for our website good right hope you really get the point okay if you have any question please let me know in the q a section right now let's deal with the last part which is the footer the footer this should be the last part of it all so we'll give it a name class called footer outer footer outer good and another uh, div that will be inside so let's call this footer so this should be the main footer right here remember what we said so we say style make this style should be should have a width of let's see uh 100 pixels over there good 100 pixels and we have the item that should be inside with the name specified footer one okay footer one give this one and let's we want four so two three four Two, three, four. All right. Good. Now, what we have next, we want to work with the CSS part of it. All right. So we come over here and we call this footer. All right. So we'll make the display to be grid. Display should be grid. Background color should have a background color of let's say let's think let's check okay let's make it blue blue over here good um have a height of let's say 200 and uh 250 pixels let's say right um padding should be let's say five pixels good width 1200 pixels margin should be auto then the grid should be 200 pixels right 50 pixels right auto 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 when you want to make it four column size four column size so we'll give it a gap 10 pixels on the row 10 pixels on the column now uh, we want to focus on every item that is found within the column within the container 
we want to work with that and we should give it a background color of let's say mm -hmm. I say we'll call it green <laughs> green okay padding should be five pixels and we should terminate this now when we run our code over here this is what we have you see this oh this is way higher than what we have here so i think we should make this 230 30 and let's see it's a little bit better i guess all right it's a little bit better than what we have there okay right so that is that right that is what we have here and um, that is really what we have okay so like i said when you want to build your house you come up with the plan and with the plan you give it to the engineer to actually make the construction so what we have here we have like a wire frame or the house plan that will be used to make or build the rebuilding or the re house so this is going to be our plan that we are going to use to create the website and that is really it right in the next module we'll create the real project right now what we have here is very much similar to what we have there in the projects okay now it, it is very nice isn't it with this it gives you a much uh, idea of what you intend to create forming your layout this way to give you an idea of what you intend to create right how now how you want to create your website how you want it to be now look at this you see everything is in line right well, looking at this area is a line and this part right is a line so that is it for this module I really hope you enjoy this uh, module and uh, you have learned a lot having said this um, if you have any question and answer please let me know in the Q&A section right um that is it and hope you understand and uh, bye for now okay ciao welcome to this module now um, in this lecture i'm going to walk you through the practical demonstration of using the grid right to actually form a real life website okay so um we'll, i just want to uh, say something uh, before we step into it okay now uh, previously in the previous video we've talked about the grid container grid items the nested uh, grid right now this is more like the real life okay um, in this section I'm going to break it down into different segments we are going to take it slowly okay so you tend to get um, the whole picture or the whole stuff on what we try to do here okay I'm going to break it down into different parts okay so when you go through the video step by step you tend to understand what we are trying to do okay because this is going to talk, take a long much time right for me to do this all right um please and please i will really like your uh, honest review in this uh, course please 
it will really help me because i have put in a lot of hard work into this course to make it to be a success i really like your review and also share it with uh, some of your colleagues um, without further ado let's move into this okay now um, everything is set right here so this is fresh uh, page that we have right here and uh, this is the folder that is that we opened so we have this couple of images i'm going to leave uh, a folder in the resource section below um, having these pictures and um, the source code i'm going to leave everything for you all right so don't worry but i just want you to go through the video and you tend to get uh, a practical understanding of what we're trying to do right here okay so without further ado let's move into it so first we are starting with the header section okay so we create a div tag right here so open and close we call this div tag um let's call it top bar main top bar main all right um inside of it we'll create another div and we'll call this one toba all right um we have a couple of lists out there so we'll create another one call this one list okay so inside the list we have some uh, items that should be inside all right so items this one is monday So we uh, do the same thing here. Let's duplicate this. Okay. let's um, give these a comment right we can call this um, header so header starts here and is going to end here Right. good so when we go to our page we run this and this is what we have here all right good um, so let's work with the CSS part so on the CSS we are going to first of all work with the body so we'll give this okay so it's going to be margin so padding should be also zero box size
Now it's a very good uh, behavior to use box sizing, right? And the value should be border box when you are uh, writing your code, most especially when you are doing the practical aspect, so that the margin, the padding, right, the width, the height, everything can be on the same line, right? So box sizing is very much a very good behavior to use when you are coding. Okay, so uh, the body area, let's name this, give this a um, comment, right? We call this body area. Area. Okay. So we'll give it the background a width first of 100 pixels all right background color background color of light gray good nice and we also end our our comment with body area body area and so when you go on this let's see what we have there okay Now let's move further to the header area. Right? So header, we name this comment header start. Header one area. Okay. In the header one we have top main. Top bar main. Just like we named it during the HTML site. And we say which should be 100 pixels. 100% actually. And the background color should be this. 1E. Top bar. We display the grid. Adding ten pixels. Templates columns just like I I said in our previous video. I'm going to explain this in details. Just have to don't type it. Then I'll move for that to explain a little bit.
right so that will be that okay the header section enter now when you run this let's see what we have here good you see this all right um this is what we have okay so we have our tag right here we have our tag actually so we say that uh, we, we named it top bar top bar main and we also have the inner one right here which is also top bar right now not lots of uh not a lot of instructors know how to do this right let's just say it's the one percent of the instructors that actually do this okay so formally uh, when i was starting out with html css learning those uh, techniques on how i can be able to design a website and become a professional i uh, stumbled upon different means right and I wasn't really creative at all with uh, designing a website, right? You tend to get that kind of feeling like looking into uh, some example of website that is already created and you have this self potential or you're self confident that you can be able to design something like this, right? so i tend to learn a lot more right so i can be able to let's say emulate those skills try my hands on a template and see how how good i am okay so when i came across the grid the grid uh, layouts i tend to figure out take time invested time to make sure that uh, whatever i'm doing i can be able to do it well and use those techniques that i've learned to really become creative now most times people will tend to use the list the unordered list or ordered list to create uh, a, a link like this so th this is a link right this is a link that whenever someone clicks here it's going to uh, show you some certain kind of things right there right so the, the, this is what we have for the navigation bar right there so um normally they use uh on other lists to create something like this but i tend to use the div tag to create something like this and this is what we got okay so let's move into it okay let's move into this and let me show you something let's go to the css so we we have a list which have monday advertising contacts and login all right so when we go to the css we we have given the box sizing that everything should be the same the margin the padding the width the height everything should be aligned right in order right so in the body side we use the width of 100 pixels and the background color we gave it to be light gray now on top main we said that the width should be 100 pixels just like I explained in the previous video that uh, when you use the width to be uh, 100 pixels, it makes other uh, container that we are going to use to be aligned in a order, right? So every uh, line would not be scattered around. It's going to be in order, right? Having said that, we give a background color to this, okay? Now, uh, the top bar, the, the top bar list, we say a display should be grid. We are working with grid, right? So, if that is the case, we gave a padding, right, to be 10 pixels. Background color should be this, and the color should be 
uh, this that is the color of the writer we say grid template column so we want to uh, make it a four column a four column on the width side so the, the first column should have a size of 180 pixels uh, 100 uh, the second column should be 100 pixels uh, the third column should be 80 pixels the fourth column should be 60 pixels right and we also want to give a gap we say 10 pieces on the row side and 10 pieces on the column side now the width should be 1200 pixels just like i explained in a former video that uh, when you use the outer container to be 100 pixels we want to use uh, 1200 to align it so it can be the same size with other content that is found inside the website that being said we'll move further to the margin margin should be also on every side the top the down the left the right we use the font uh, family that is font face should be this okay and the font size should be 40 pixels now after after that we said that uh, we we'll give it a border to on each right side right to be one pixels that is what we have here this border on that side on the right to be one pieces solid this color margin right should uh, have some sort of space on the right and it should be uh, five pixels okay right so having said that uh, we'll move to the uh, second part of the, uh, the of this project welcome back guys in this uh, video i'm going to walk you through uh, the logo uh, designing the uh, creating the logo in the website and also the navigation area without further ado let's move into it real quick all right so this is where we left out uh, in the former video right that we just uh, gone through so um, let's create a div right here and uh, first we'll give a comment right here okay and we'll call this logo logo starts here good all right and uh, we give open a tag right here and in that tag we call this um, logo area logo area good logo area all right that's been done we we'll create another tag and we we'll call this bees logo bees this logo good now uh, within this we are going to have a span okay a span tag and in this span tag we are going to call this bees so bees create another one Call this news. News. All right. That is being done. Then we should also close this. Okay. All right. So enter. all right um so we also create for navigation area navigation okay navigation bar right good uh let's do the one that we are going to end it with. so navigation navigation 
but yeah. Good. So inside of this, we are going to have a div. Okay. Call this div menu. Menu. Actually. All right. So we have one that div that should be inside. We call this the menu list, All right? Inside of this, we have the items that should be inside. We call this one item. Good. So home. Um. So let's duplicate this. Um. We are going to have. Um, category, category, okay, single use, so let's capitalize this also, um, single news, drop down, uh, okay, I'll say about us. I say drop down. You can use anything you want. It's just a pool of concept. Contacts. All right. Uh, okay. Good. Um. So that should be it for the HTML part. Right. Uh, so we'll move over to the CSS part and we'll continue from where we stopped. Good. Now let's move over to it. All right. So we have here the, so we create a, you know, Logo area starts right. So right here we see want to work with the bees. Call this font family should be let's say area. Okay, font width would be bolder. Okay, color should be this. Great. News. Font family should be more Should be this. So that will be the end of the logo area. The logo area. Area ends. Okay. Um, so we still have to continue. From there. So logo. Logo area make the width to be hundred percent.
weight should be 118 pixels. Margin should be auto. Font size should be this. Right. Nice. Let's move further to navigation area. Okay. Um, all right. So, want to work with the menu. And we we'll give the width to be hundred percent. Background color should be this one e. Menu mm. list. Display should be grid. All right, padding should be twenty pixels. Pattern color should be this. Template column eighty pixels, hundred pixels, one thirty pixels, one twenty. So also give a gap of let's say ten pixels, ten pixels, right here. The width should be one thousand two hundred to be aligned with other um, item that is inside the website or the layout we are working with. Okay. On to on to see what okay sounds okay uh it's font size of don't forget of sixteen pixels all right Menu. Menu list. Margin right should be five pixels or so. Okay. So item. So should be with a Kesa. Kesa should be pointer. All right. All right. So let's run our code and see what we have here. Okay. Nice. This looks very nice. Okay. See this? You see this? Yes. 
All right. Uh, based on what we have there, so we uh, want to work with the logo right there. So we created a div tag, right? And also this tag that should be inside. Uh, we created two spans that we hold separately this text and this text. Okay, and we gave it different tag right there. Now for the navigation bar, uh, like I said, not a lot of instructors does this. Uh, most people most times use uh, an ordered list to actually manipulate or make use of a navigation bar. But I kind of figure it out to let it try grid layout to form this and it actually works. So uh, that is why I intend to share this with you. So we created a div right there that is holding the menu. And from there, we also create another div which holds the list. And we have the items right there. Now, when you go to the CSS part right here, you uh, find out what we did, okay? So, all right, so that is the upper one. So, we gave, we renamed uh, the span area with the name this, and uh, we said the font family should be this, the font weight should be bolder, uh, have this color, and the news also is somehow similar. So, let's uh, enclose this so it should be able to work, okay? Good. So um, it's the uh, same thing. And we go to the logo area, the logo holding uh, the two spans. We give it a width of 100 pixels and we give it a background color of white. Okay. So the height we say 70 pixels. The this logo should be uh, this size. And the margin should be auto on every side. The font size should be 50 pixels. Now we want to work with navigation area. We said the menu outside should be 100 pixels and it should have a background color of black. So uh, we pick out the menu, pick out the list. We say that the uh, display should be grid, padding 20 pixels inside. The background color should be these, color should be white. The font uh, width should be 10 pixels. The grid, uh, columns so you should have one two three four five six just like we have here one two three four five okay and uh, so we, we 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 made that to be this way that it should have uh, six uh, what they call it six uh, column area because one of them is enclosed to each other, right? That's why six. So uh, we give, based on how the write-up is long, that is why uh, we have to change the size, right? So this is 80 pixels on the column size, 100 pixels, 130, 120, 100 and 400 pixels. And we give it a gap of, let's say, 10 pixels on the role and also the column, uh, we gave it a width of 1,200 pixels to the inner right part of it, so you can align with other item. We gave it a margin of auto font family to be this, that, and we actually want to work inner item right of the right of that is inside. We say that the margin right should be five pixels, uh, right. So it should give a space uh, within, in between uh, each write-up, right, in the navigation area. So when you over it, it should give you this color, and it should, when we take our, our cursor there, it should have a, a pointer, right? So having said this, right, this, uh, this is, this have to do with uh, this section. Um, without further ado, this is what we can be able to achieve. Without further ado, let's move into the next section.
Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to walk through creating the first grid, right? Now, in the previous section where we did some kind of uh, wireframe, right? Um, in the advanced part of creating different grid, and we want to replace those grid with the real pictures, write-offs, and what have you, right? That is what we want to do first. So we want to work with the first grid, and in this video, I'm going to uh, show you how we can be able to do that, right? So uh, right here, remember in the last video, we did some kind of layout, right? And we uh, broke them down into different kind of segments. So we want to start that here, and we start that with the first grid. So right here, we we'll create a div tag, right? And this div tag, uh, we are going to call it um, main main zero outer. That is the most outer, the outer. Uh, grid so uh, let's call let's name this grid one so this grid one you are going to see how grid one is all right so this is the first outer div okay we create another div inside of this and we call this one uh, main div okay main one right okay so for this one is going to have an item inside of it so we call this uh, item item one inside this item one we would use some sort of image that should be inside of it so create another div and name it img inside of it we we'll create our image as i see and we use uh, any kind of this image that we have here all right so let's use this one um uh, we use this one or any sort you want actually we use this one so we have the name there so we we'll name it and we'll just copy this okay and we'll come to our code and we'll paste it here good all right so that is for that we come here and we also name uh, this one that we have here so we create another one another div right there we'll call this item 2 okay item 2 inside of this we will have a div right there to actually take care of the space so we we'll give this a style right here we're actually using uh, an inline uh, css right here so to be much more easier for us okay make the width to be don't worry when, when i'm done with uh, the html part you tend to see the css part and why this was done this way okay remember when you're writing html code you really don't get the whole the whole point till you are done with the html and you move further to the css part all right so we we'll create another uh, div class here and we name this one inside inside text one all right 
So create a lot of div right there. Div right there. And we call this in one. So business. Okay. And we create another one right there. Okay. This should not be copy valid. I think I should off my car lock right there. Alright. Okay. So we name this inside text inside text two inside text two good inside of it we have another div that's inside we'll call this in two and here we say January the one twenty forty five. All right, good. So, div right here, we call this inside text three. All right. in three so we give a paragraph here most times when we are working with websites we just give a random uh, you know a random text so we mostly use login login okay login good all right, since that is done, okay. All right, all right, all right. All right, so this cover this, this holding this, this holding this, right. Is holding this okay? So, since that is done, we come here and we create something different, okay? So, let's have another thing right there. this item 3 item 3 okay and this item 3 we are going to have this right here the class should be inside text one if should be in one it should be business business January first twenty forty five. All right, good. 
All right, so give this a class name of inside text three. Okay, right here we also use our log that we have here. So in three, so create a paragraph. Code is Lauren Lauren Ibson. All right. This is cool. This is covering this. Right. And this should be covering this. So that is what we have for that. Good. So this for this. This for this, this for this. Okay. We should have another one right there. So we just have to create a second or third one fourth actually so let's copy this because it's going to be a four image and put this change this to four all right since it's same image it's going to be the same that's what we have there and we do this for the last one also is five right but right here we create a different thief to hold the space else is going to give us an issue the height should be 200 pixels right giving it a width of two just like we did for the div that is at the top. If not, there's going to be an issue right there. Right? There's going to be an issue right there. All right. Uh, right here, uh, we would also work with another part of it, which is the the news area, and so we we'll name this break news. Break news and uh, featured featured news area start here. All right. So right there, we'll create a div inside this div. Call this item six. Right, um, that is done. We create so called break in here. Okay. 
break one right okay class should be um break two as what we'll name it there We're giving it a different name so it will be very much easier for we to detect and make sure you take notes on what we are trying to do so it's going to be very much easier to actually um, work with it when it comes to the time for the CSS area so we just have to copy this this uh, text right there so just copy it and paste it here you can use your shortcut or close I think there's a mistake somewhere. So we just have to copy that and we paste it right there okay and we add up some text to it all right so if that has been done we should probably add more to it all right and we should add some break right there break break Right here we add another div and call this one to be next one. Give me this style. I'll say width should be hundred percent. right and inside of this should probably have this okay got this nest inside of it Future news. All right. And that'll be it. this case on the grid one area so grid one and now 
when we run this, this is what we are going to have. Right, parallel of text. We should definitely work with our CSS and see what we have here. All right, so we move up what to our CSS area and let's do some work, some job there. All right, so here we have it. Okay, so right here we should also. Name this the grid one starts. So the grid one starts there, and what we want to do here, we want to work with our main one. Remember, we have uh, this main one. So we come here and say main one. Main one, All right? Should have value of this layer should be grid. Should be grid. Um, the height should be. I see we have a height to be 600 pixels, padding should be 5 pixels, the width should be 1200, margin should be auto grid should be this let's run this and see what we are doing definitely would not make that much sense see we are done with it all right now when you go uh, back to uh, the video we did uh, when I was using the different layouts to form the different kind of grid that we form in colors that have different kind of color they are the same thing right here the same class name so what I just did I just um, used the layout so I replaced it with the content that is supposed to be for those layouts the same name so if you check in the class names, it's the same thing that we have here. So it's just a little thing that changes, and that is the need for using the grid layout to actually design your website. Right? It makes it very much faster and easier to design your website using the grid layout. So grid area should be one, span two, and spawn three. So we have item six. Read area. Okay. Should be six to spawn four places. Right. Six pixels. So let's run our code and see how it's something else. Until we are done, 
all things we know what's going on here. It's very relative. Alright. What on sixty pixels? Wait. Um, the main one. That's the one I think to explain what, what we are doing right there. So don't worry. We get back to it and I'll explain to you in details. All right. So the color should be red. Okay. The background color should be this. Okay, should add a linear gradient. Linear gradient. to be this so to bottom RGB so zero 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 point five all right fifty percent RGB should be zero, 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 zero. Should be, let's say, then run the code and see the outcome of what we have right there. And this should have a URL right there. To use, let's check one of the pictures. Okay. What picture are we going to use here? Okay, let's make use of this one. So, just have to copy it right there. And we use it here. Okay, we use it right there and we close this. Good. So the background size should cover on that area. The background should not repeat itself, no repeat, 
All right. Let's repeat. Background position. Position. Yes. Position. Center. So inside text one, the text that is inside we want to work with it right now. So we are saying it should be absolute. Give it an absolute. Top should be sixty. Percent right there. Um, the left should have 25 percent right there. Plus form should be let's translate it, translate it to be um, minus 50 percent. Minus fifty percent background color should be this. Okay, should be this, right? Uh, We tend to let's run our code and let's see what we have here. All right, things are getting into shape a little bit. So let's work for inside text two. Side text to the position should be absolute also. Absolute. Absolute. Absolute also. Top should be sixty percent. Left should be fifty five percent. Transform should be translate. Translate um, into fifty. Done. We work with the inside text three. Inside text three. All right. We give this a position of say absolute. Absolute top should be let's say eighty percent. Left should be let's say forty percent. Transform should translate to should translate to this to be minus fifty percent. Okay, then we want to work with the inner text, the in one, which is the black font family should be this on Sirat on Sirat. All right. Sans serif would have the pattern of 
let's say five pixels right there and font size should be a set of pixels of size and two should be I will call out let's say white font family should be on see that still sun save okay all right so padding should be five pixels right there font size should be 12 pixels okay so that's what that's for this let's go on our code and see how this Alright, so we see have more work to do right there. See have more job to do. Okay. So in three would be this color should be same so it's going to be uniform okay font family should be this Want see that sun save sun save party of five pixels right font size of 12 pixel of pixels and we leave font width to be older older okay text align to justify we work with the one we caption and right here I have color plan. Okay. I have font family to be Mont Sirat. Mont Sirat Sun Serif. Still. So it also a padding of let's see five pixels all right all right font size should be 12 pixels twelve pixels work with item two Right, position here should be relative text align should be center. Right, color should be red. Background. Background should be linear, 
Vivian Williams Williams Vivian Williams Just exactly what we have here. All right, so we just come here. Just come here. We copy this. Copy that same background size should have covered this. So the size should be covered, the background repeat should be no repeat, no repeat. All right, background. Position should be should be this should be centered. The work width uh with this inside text work with the inside next one also position should be absolute top should be 60 percent left should be 25 percent transform should Form should be translate. Translate minus fifty. Minus fifty. Background color should be this. Yellow. Good. I think we should also make use of this also because it is a four side image so we just have to change this this almost looks the same right Ooh. it is um, this Right, right, and so the one there's nothing there, the two should be taken out from there, and let's see item. So, name this item. Should have no color right there. It should be forty. Should be forty. I one to have this. I one have this. On family should be on C rat on C rat on C rat same so it can be uniform sun serif padding should be five. Right, 
of from family should be so Excel. You now the color of this. Let's run our code and see what we are working with. All right, this is beginning to have good shape. A little bit. Still have more job to do. Font family should be month C rat and save. Body should be five pixel. Size should be this in three. Okay. Should be white. Okay. Uh, Front family should be this. The same thing. On C lot Sound save Padding should be five pieces. Font size should be on two pixels font width should be bolder text align should be justify come to the center as what it means We have out here. Okay. Have the color of black. Front family. Monk Sigas. Sun Save. Body. Five pixels. Font size will be 12 pixel. Alright, item 5. Want to work with item 5? Give it the position of say elective. Text align to the center. center. Color should be red. Background color should be this. Okay. So 
the slot we have back then. Um, we probably want to copy this. But uh, button size should be cover. The background, the pitch should be no repeat. Should be no repeat. No repeat. Background position the center. Inside text one position should be absolute. Absolute. Right. Uh, Let's run our code and see what we have here. Things are getting into shape a little bit. It's a long seat. Okay, 60 pixels. That's it to be minus fifty percent, minus fifty percent, right? But then color should be yellow. Let's see. We also want to work with this, just have to change a little thing. Yeah. The absolutes should be 55. The absolutes, the background color should be here. Right? Okay, should be three absolutes. This should be eighty. This should be forty. All right. This should not have any background color. All right. So. We want to work with text. Text one that is inside of it. So the color should be black. Okay. Font family should be one that that sounds safe. All right, padding should be five pixel font size should be twelve pixel.
is to assure to yeah, it should have a color of white. Okay. Five font size font width should be bolder. Okay. Text align should justify justify right. it should be white on true okay is three right? this one three you should have a color color white okay all right control this should have front width front width to be bolder the bolder text online to be justified out right Let's run our code and see what we have here. This is getting into shape a little bit. Okay. Um. All right. So, make this black font family should be on say on select sound safe. That's all we have for that. We continue our code. All right. So click one. So Should be this yellow. The width should be this. Party should 
how to do this. The height should look like this. Position should be absolute. Left should be one down twenty pixels. Okay. Let's move forward to the pixel. Color should be black. Font font. Alright. Um font size should be say system pixels. Wait three should have a color of say white. Position should be absolute. Definitely absolute. Top should be twenty three pixels. Left should be two seventy pixels. Front front. Next two we have the margin to be auto it should be one thousand something background color this F F F F F I guess so how many are they two three four five six probably of this yellow and the height should be 50 pixels border left should be 8 pixels so it yellow yes. okay. All right. This it's somehow similar to what we 
should do here. Okay. Make this to be black. Yes, you have a position of let's say ability. Okay. The top should be let's say two pixel. Um here yeah, should have twenty pixel. Okay. That's from the left. We should have font size to be as large as large from family Montreal and there we have it okay Let's, there should be something wrong somewhere all right Let's go to our code and check what is wrong. Okay. Should be from the HTML, I guess. So we have this right here. Code in the outer one. Right? We give an item one. Right there, with its image, right, and we have item two right here, right, which have the size to be this. Have this item that should be inside of it. Then one. Right, item two and item three is there also. Should be there also. Item three also here. And the three should be there, right? Think everything should be in control. Is that text three? Right? Right. Let's discover this. Right. Discover this. Yeah, the one so where do we have the issue right now? Let's check the fourth one. Okay. Item one, item two, item three. Item three, check the fifth one. Fifth on item right there. Have the space. Okay. That is not the case. Right. That shouldn't be the case. 
that shouldn't be the case. Let's check it out and see. We have an issue right there. So we should go through this step by step and see where our problem is coming from. So this item six right this close here. This should close there also. This should close here also. This should close there. This should close there. Right. Let's see what's going on. Everything is should be in order. Tend to have a little problem somewhere. Should it be the image? I guess so. For JPG. Alright. Let's run this and see. Okay. Um, things is getting better a little bit. the problem should be coming from. All right, so we said the main issue how we read of this. I'm in a height of 600 pixels, padding 5 pixels, the width 1002, margin of okay. width nice, right? All right, so the item should be this span to areas. Places. Let's see at M6, grid area 6 span, 4 height of 60 pixels, position should be relative, bottom should be this, have a background color black. Okay. And to check where the issue should be coming from.
Eighty percent, forty percent, right there. Okay. I'm from family. Let's see. Checking the code. See everything is okay. From family, see if it's perfect. Really, in this part, things are getting more serious and advanced. So, you really have to be careful right here. All right, so we'll make this four. Good and see it is working perfectly well. Let's change image right there and run it and see what we have right there. Okay, right here. Let's make some changes. Eighty. Okay. This should be item two, right there. All right. Let's use a different image right there. Let's see ourselves. Right. 
right. Check if everything is in place. From family, the same, body, the same. Right. Out. It's not going to cool. Need to add a few things right there. So I need to add more. It's not complete yet. Alright. So make this item to view the position C um relative. Right. So text should align to the center color should be red yeah background color should be okay should make the background that's background color too. so the background would be linear gradient Inside of this, see the bottom. The bottom has a GBA. Zero, 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 zero point five. So, okay, let's make it more lighter. much better it's 50 percent out there and you make another one zero 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 and ten right there this should be hundred percent right The URL should be in use. Okay. I'll give this one dot JPG. Let's check this out. Let's work with some items. Next one. Position should be absolute. The top should be sixty percent. 
left should be, let's say, 55%. Okay. Uh, 25. Okay. Uh, let's work. Transform should be translate. All right, to minus 50. That means it should come out at the front. All right, but um, color should be um, yellow. Like text position should be absolute. Right. Mm -hmm. I will tend to create another one inside of the inside. Inside text three. Okay. Give it the position of we say each. Absolute first top should be eighty percent, left should be forty percent, transform should be let's say translate, translate to minus fifty. Minus fifteen. All right. Um. So we we'll do. Let's run our code and see what we have here. is
I'll be funny. See if I can size. Should definitely work with this. Um, font width will be bolder. Bolder. Right. Let's just. Text align justify actually. Text align justify. Justify. out here to have a color of this is an output actually There's a problem somewhere, we just have to detect where this is coming from. Alright. Let me see. And the problem somewhere will detect it. Alright. Font family. Be months. See that. Sound safe. Party. Should definitely repeat this.
this should be fine. Right. That should be fine. Holding the same thing. 2 This is very delicate so we have to be very careful what we are doing make sure everything is in Alright. 
definitely change this. Yeah, so. So on this one, it's something we are doing. Is is holding this right? Item five, four, three. Item one is image. So two, three, four, two, three, five, four, three, two, five. Three, two, five. I think four. Wait, let's try something. Hold on. Two, three, right? Two, three, four, five. Okay, this is it. Then two, three, two, three, like that.
think there's something wrong somewhere. It's meant to be four. Four. Right there. Four right there. Let's take it one after the other. This is five. Good. Five. Four. Three. I think we really need to do some changes here. Let's do some changes here. Let's do some changes here. Let's detect here yeah. who that should be coming from. Try to think. Think I put that. It's holding item. What is item? What is item? Item one has a height of this.
Okay. Let's check from the beginning to see where this problem might be coming from. change this to identity Right. Right, so I think the B this should be I think four.
different side. I think there's something wrong somewhere. We we'll definitely check it out. Let's go for break. We'll be back. Alright guys, uh, we uh, are back, so uh, we discovered the issue here, now when, when, when you run this, right, this is what you get, right, um, we I actually went through the code and I discovered something, we made a mistake here, this place is supposed to be style not class style okay so when you want this this is what you get see everything is normal and secondly this is not supposed to be like this so we the mistake we encountered from there is here right it's here supposed to be um, 23 pixels right and here 270 pixels and you save it you run it and this is where you get everything complex to normal you see so um, when you are going through this code you really have to be very careful okay yes you really have to be very careful because a little semicolon can just spoil the whole code and it might not work okay so you really have to be careful and you really need to understand what you are doing now let's uh, go over the code one one more time and let me explain okay so we said that Let's check this out. Okay, this is the outer column, the outer container, right? And it ends here, right there, right there. Okay, so, so the, that is the outer container. It's there, and it starts here. So the main, so what we are giving our CSS. This is going to hold the width of 100% and this is going to hold the width of, let's say, 1,200. Um, so that everything can be in line in the website, right? Uh, just like we did this, just like we said, like uh, when you go to your uh, CSS, right? So let me show you something. When you go to your CSS, the mistake we had here, this mistake right there, that this was percent, right? You added, we added percent here. You added percent here and you save this. You come and run this. This is going to cost this and it doesn't make sense. Just imagine, it doesn't make sense. Really, it doesn't make sense. 
So the use of that outer container, main outer container, giving it a width of 100% is for it to have this kind of a space. And for the alignment, what I mean is that giving the main, main one class container 1200 of pixels is for it to have these these items here to be aligned in line everything to be in line you see this is almost in line with this with this and the images it makes it to be uniform and it makes the website to be nice there is a need for that so let's get this code back to normal so that is for that i really want to stress on it so you tend to understand what we are doing right here okay it is a whole bunch of code so we didn't really need to take it slowly so this right covers this right there good now we have item one this item one holds this image right and we give the size you see the size in the CSS part okay but so that is the image right and this item two is holding this image this part right okay so item two gives it a size of 200 and 265 right so there will be no lagging now this image item one and item four are the only images that we're giving uh, the same the sizes okay so it's not going to cause any problem there that is why it was given in there right so that is for item item two item three right all of them are almost the same right there and right here item six which holds this, which holds the break news. Okay, so we have this break news, it starts here and ends here. So this holds the, 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 uh, the um, break news right of itself, and this holds this right there. See this? So we say break, 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 it should break down. Right, um, we should break down that we should have this space before the future news. That is the essence of the break. And right there, we have uh, a width of 100 pixels, which is this width of say, 100 pixels right there. Okay, and the next two. Now, let's go to the CSS and let's explain few things that you really have to know okay good so right here we give the display to the grid of the main item which is uh, in the HTML give it 600 pixels a pattern of 5 pixels just like I said the width should be 1200 so every item in the website should be aligned and we gave a margin of auto so the grid we said that this area holds the row and this area holds the number of column so we are giving it a four column area right so which is one two three four this image spans two right it's meant to be four columns right and we have three column area which have to be one, two, three, and four. Good. One, two, three. Actually, one one image span to the other. It's meant to be one, two, three. Um, and we give it the size. We give it a gap of uh, ten pixels. Ten pixels, which have to do with this and this area. Good. Now we say that in the item one, which is the first image, we say you should have start from the row, the 
spam to uh, just like just like we said that give us this size that is around here that you should span two areas and this should span three areas right and in item six we said that it should span uh, item six should start from the area right uh, six and it should span four areas four items actually then the height should be 60 pixels, the positive position should be relative, the movement should be 60 pixels from the bottom, right? So it can be aligned and it can be positioned in place, right? We should have a pattern color of black, the which should be 100 and uh, 100 uh, percent, and this is this right there. Yes. So um, we targeting all the thief items should have a padding of one pixel. And right here we say the outer um, container should be 100 pixels wide. Okay. So the one item should have a height of 450 pixels and the width of 700 pixels right there. So the item three should have a position of so item three have to do with remember this is one right so two three four and five is item six right there good so we said that uh, we have a position of relative text aligned to the center the color should be red background should be linear gradient now let me explain this linear gradient for you right there and that have to do with the images that we have here. Good. So at first, we said that from this image, we we, we said that to this image right here, right there, all this image. You see that this image is different from this. Can you see it? That this image is different from this. This one has somehow a black background right and this is just an image without no background at the top of it isn't it so this is how we did it we said the background should be linear gradient so we are giving it this color right and would you be which is red green blue and you know, the rest of it so we say that um, to the bottom, this background should start from the top to the bottom, having these with 50% uh, of each potency. On it. And this RGBA should have uh, 10, which is a little bit lighter and 100% with the image on it. Did you see it? Did you get the point? Right? That is how we came about this image. Now I'm going to explain this right up that is at the top and you tend to understand. Now, when you remember, uh, we captioned it to be something different, right? Which is inside text one. And we said that the position should be absolute, right? So it should be at the top. And we gave uh, the movement that the top should be 60 pixels, uh, the left should be 25 pixels, the transform should be translate. So the use of this transform and translate to be 100, uh, of course, minus 50%, minus 50%, it means that giving it that value should make those texts to appear at the front. If you change it to be something different, it will not appear, right? Yes, it will not appear. Let's try it. And let's see. Okay. Now, when you run this, okay, let's change something else. Um, 500 pixels, these goes for text one 
let's see what we have here. See, there's a difference right there. Okay. So it's much more better to to leave it at the front. Good. So the same way for text one, text two, text three, and the rest of them is arranging those text to be in front of this by the essence of what we are doing right there to be in front good um let move further this holds the text right giving me a color black uh, front family to be this Padding and font size. Okay. Good. Um, let's try something different. Item four. So this is item four. So we replicated uh, the same thing, and that is what we have. Now let's try this. Okay. Let's try this. And let's try this. Okay. Let's run this and see. All right, so let's check out the movement and let's see what we have there. No, okay. Okay, so we want to try out something. It's really good for you to play around this to get a real understanding of what we are trying to do here. Right. Okay. So let's take this out and see what we have there. It's taking out.
you see this so when we took the image out this background that out you see what happened there we got this everything was empty right now this is not having effect you know why because we have a lot of these inside text that we did the same uh, we wrote the same code right it was replicated so you can try it on your own and see you can remove the uh, dot inside text one for all the replicated uh, all the replicated code that we have written you see it's going to change right the transform works when you remove this this works with the hello guys welcome back all right um we want to continue from where we stopped um, in the last uh, video, we talked about creating the grid one. Now I want to move further to creating other parts of the website which have to do with other parts of the grid, right? So we'll move further to grid two. In the last section, this is where we stopped. We'll be able to create something like this. Now we want to continue uh, beneath and let's see how things go out from there. All right, so we want to work on the second D uh, grid. So uh, let's get started. All right, so we want to start this if a div, right? Open and close. We call this grid to be main to outer. Okay. Good. And inside of it, we would have another div. We'll name this uh, main two itself. Good. All right. So inside of this, we'll create another div right here, and we'll call this inner inner in a one okay and to have a class name called week five good so this should be latest news latest news good uh down beneath Alright, that is the latest news. We would also have this also inside of this one. Okay, we we'll create another uh, tag. Let's arrange our code and make sure everything is put in place. Good. All right. So inside of this, we would have another one to be inside of here. We'll call this. Okay, let's have a car block. Uh, call this to be grid six. All right. And we name it view or right nice all right so on the outside we would have a relative right here right 
let this inner to inner to and break seven follow us right good that is it right there and oh okay so this one holds this one right this holds this this holds this this one holds this right we just want to be sure that everything is okay and it's put into place all right so so when we are writing our here css it's not going to give us any issue okay okay I have another one right here. We would call this card out. D right here. Call this card out. All right. Cut out and inside of this we would have some things that will be inside of it and we would call this to be card right there card itself card okay and we'll have an image in there image which name is um this so we can use an area of let's look for an image that we are going to use right here okay I think we should make use of this. So we copy this, come to our code and we paste it there. Say so .jpg, give it a width of let's say um 400 pixels, 100 pixels, right? Should break down a little bit. This space beneath, and we'll call the one that the writer call this uh, if one okay. call this card one. Add one right there. This card one we consist of different text that should be inside of it. Okay. So for this card text, card text one. All right. Nice. Um, we'll create another div to be inside of this and we'll call this C1 C1 have a text inside called business so duplicate this 
about this C2 about this 3 same thing here also 2 3 rename this to be this January is our one twenty forty five. Um, this should be login that we always use. Yeah, just a short form of login. Um, this login is a text that is mostly used at random, right? And it's much more longer than that. But we just need a short part just to have a proof of concept. So this log uh, should be enclosed, should be much more bigger than that. So we'll use h2 tag right there. Good. Okay, so H2 tag beneath it should have a paragraph tag and this paragraph tag will say to no login right as oh, uh, whatever you and T and stuff like that, just a random text. And what would be, I don't know what I'm writing right now, right? So that is done right there. Good. Okay. We should have a break right there. Good. Why right, that is done? We should probably have a description somewhere around here okay so the okay give it a style to be border bottom one pixel solid this color seven five seven D right you need a height of let's say one ninety pixels right good so right there we have another um, call this card text for card text for right there right and here is the image so this image it just um, have different numbers the name seems to be similar just we just have to change okay okay at this point we are going to use this kind because it's a different kind of image right there so at this point let's pick image it's going to be a user 
so let's copy this name right and we'll come here and we paste it is it a jpg jpg let's say is it jpg okay jpg the jpg okay so let's paste this over there over there good give it some style right there style of border values border values should be 50 percent the width should be 30 pixels should be 30 pixels all right uh let's give it a height of let's say 30 pixels margin to the right somewhere margin to the right and we can give this um 10 pixels all right you really uh will not understand what we are doing here it will be much more understandable when we are done writing the code right the question i'll explain it to you much better font family right here give it the text um montessirat the cigarette good sun safe sun safe over there and we would definitely give this a position to align the right direction that we want it to be so the bottom should be 50 30 i guess so All right on the left on the left should be let's say this all right and we'll name this do judo judo just like saying don't do right Oh, yeah, I use a jump do there. You can use it to whatever name you want. After we are done with this, but we just want to name this to do position, which I have to be relative, relative right there, bottom should be 50 pixels right left should move 20 to 30 pixel right great so we have a list here we have a list right there right and this list we should probably say one two three four and the style here is going to come in this form only to be to have a font family same i guess you can 
you can guess it. Mount C rat. Mount C rat. Okay. Sun serif. Sun serif. Good. So let's duplicate this. Nice. This looks nice over there. Okay. This one holds this, this one holds. Okay, there is an issue there. Border. Okay. This one holds this. Right. This one holds this. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's check it again. This one holds this right. This one is going to hold this one right there. Okay. Um, this one is going to hold this. Uh, let's see. Over there, the sun is going to hold this. Okay. Uh, what's next? Are we going to do there? So let's run our code and see what we are doing for now. If we on the right part, so it's going to be something like this, right? Okay. Um, let's continue from where we stopped. Okay. Let's actually continue from where we stopped. Great, so we'll have another div created there. Um, um, we we'll name this to be inner for inner for all right. And this should, let's say, this should have something of this sort. Okay. Should have a card also here. Card out. Card. Should have card here. Yeah. Right inside of this, we we'll have image right there. Inside of this image, call this news. All right, so which thing? Is something different over there. Let's give it this. This is one of this image right there. Okay. So 
I want to say the, the name. We we'll copy that and we use is over here. Right. Is it over there? The width should be 100 pixels. Okay, we would have to give the width to be this 100 pixels. Go back and take it down there. We'll have card one. Card one meeting over there. Class name should be card one. Card one. How this we call this card uh, just like we did in the old place? Let's check the name again. Card, card, right? Card one, card text one, card text two. Over there, card one, which have card. Um, text one, card text one inside of it. We have this to be C one, C one is business. So we probably duplicate this like we did in the other side. Card text two, card text three, C two, C three, C three. Um, this should be of the same mm, date, January first, twenty. 2045. Okay. This should be lower. Okay, we have to copy this here. Lower. Lower. Let's just copy this. Right there. And this add it there. All right. That should that should do the dirty trick, and we would probably paste it here. Right. Should probably paste it there. All right. So let's see what we have here. This holds this. This holds this. This one. Who's this? We have the image that should be there. We have the image that should be there. We have card one, card text one, card text two, card text three, right? Okay, this holds this 
and probably this should be broken over there right and right there so if this one ends here if that one ends there on card one okay you don't end there on card one right the brick should definitely come this way so okay let's not forget this holding this this is holding this um um this should be holding this right the break should be somewhere around here so we we'll, would we'll have the other description that should be in, in the in the card right so right here this place should hold the description should hold the description and so we go ahead and we write the description that should be there Okay, um, so what should be the description? First of all, we'll give it a star. A star should be this. Border radius, right? Uh, border radius. Border radius. Okay. Okay, that should have to do with the image, not here. So, border bottom. Border bottom. Don't worry, you get to see what we are doing. Okay. It is not that meaningful at this point, but you get to understand what we are doing. And you will get the point later on. Okay. Right there. So, right here, uh, we terminate this. So, not have any complications. Right, right here uh, we would if um, the name called card card text for card text for. image should be user just like we have in the first one all right order order should be reduce of this 50 percent The width should be this, um, to be thirty percent adjustment here. So, in this image right here, we'll give it a style of, uh, say, this. Okay. So style is surrounded by this. Right, see everything should be 
normal border radius 50 percent width 30 percent uh okay right probably should also have a height of let's say 30 percent so it can be equal on both sides okay nice Mm, and margin on the right on the right should be 10 pixels on the right right let's see what we are doing okay it's still coming off here are not done yet all right uh, so let's check the code and see make sure everything is in place all right okay should probably give a page here so the page style should say with this this style should be this our font family mon uh sun Serif. Okay. Okay. All right. And we should have to okay. do do. Not okay there. Probably we should have a position. So this will be terminated here. We should have a position, position to be relative, relative, bottom to be 30 pixels. Left should be 40 pixels right okay we should definitely create a list beneath it just like we did on the card at the top so create a list right there and this list should give it a style to be this okay position position should be relative right position should be relative but uh, bottom should be let's say 50 pixels uh, all right 50 pixels left should be 230 pixels okay all right underneath should have a list if the list is star of the font font family uh, to be the same thing once let's just copy this so, um Prevent us from wasting time. Okay. 
uh, we we'll call this one, two, three, four, and we we'll duplicate this over right there. All right. Uh, that is done for now. So let's check. This holds this. This holds this. This one holds the end that is there. This holds this. Let's check this holds this. Good. All right. So if that is done. Okay. We'll come here. We'll come here, right? Something for we to do. And we'll write our code right here. So we create something that should be here. Create a div. Uh, we'll call this div to be inner five. Okay. Inside of this, we would have something like this over here. And we'll call this one to be, uh, okay, in five, it's in five. So that's why it is named that we in five. Okay, probably have a break here. Because we want to, uh, why there's a break right there? It's because underneath we have uh, some, uh, what they call it, like a wheat having different colors and uh, the wheat having different colors shows uh, the number of fan that should be there. Uh, okay. All right. So we we'll have another div right there. And in this div, we we'll give it a class name to be fan1. Fan area1. Okay, you get to understand what we're doing um, when writing our CSS. Okay, so we'll duplicate this to we need uh, four, four bit, I guess. So. Um, one, two, three, four, four, right there. So we change it over here. So this two, this three, this is four, right there, and should have a break right there. And each and every one of them. All right. So this one holds this one right there. All right. So let's see. Um, if we on the right part, okay. Three. Right there, we are going to create something small. That will be part of what we are doing. And we will name this to be um, um, so inner six. Right, in our six div class should 
be named add so it's like a short form for advert we will have a advert right there advertisement okay right there right advertisement right there we we'll have a break right there okay over here we would work on the advertisement okay and here we'll give it a style and in this style we are going to say background color background color to be we say white position should be left hmm? Should be on the left side. Oh no, should be relative so we can be able to move it all around. And from the left, we would definitely, um, definitely have, um, let's say 930, I guess, 36. Right. Um. Okay. If that is done, bottom from the bottom area. Definitely have a three ninety four to be pre calculated that way. So one pixel solid white. Okay. Uh, we height of let's say two hundred pixels. Have a width of we say three forty pixels. Padding to be ten pixels. Right. So if that is done we'll have the main stuff in here which is give an image to be here and this image can select one from this all right so probably have one of this image which we have to choose Mm. Okay, this would be nice. Uh, all right, so let's paste this over there. Okay, and this image will give it a height of let's say, uh, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, let's say 180 pixel right uh, and a width of let's say 320 pixels Right, so that should do the dirty trick. Um, let's go ahead and you know check our code 
from the onset uh, from degree two. So that that one, this one right there, puts this one over here. So this one holds which one? Let's see. This one holds this one. Uh, right. It holds that one. Uh, let's see. This inner one holds this one. Right. This holds this. This holds. This holds. Uh, this is having the card out. This holds this. Uh, okay. Okay. This holds this card itself. Okay. This holds this. This holds oops. This holds this right. So I think we should be on the right path anyway. Um, we I think we should be on the right path. I think we should probably starts working on the CSS, I guess. All right, so let's go up and work on the CSS. All right, so. So if we should have uh, most of the classes uh, that we named in Grid 2, we should probably have that in mind. Or you can just as well scroll up to see what we have there, right? Just to be sure for ourselves on what we are doing. Okay. If that is said, we'll name this. Read, okay. Read to start, right? Not to worry. I uh, will impute the. I will give the source code in the description of the video, right? So you get to see what we did. And how we arrive on every outcome we have there. Okay, so right here, like we said from the early uh, the advanced technique video, or um, first of all, we'll, uh, give a display called grid and the height of six hundred pixels to hold everything, right, and. The width should be 1,200. I believe by now you know what we mean when we use this width to be 1,200 pixels. I've explained it numerous amounts of time. I guess you understand the point right now. Okay. Okay, so auto, auto, auto should definitely have a gap of 10 pixels, 10 pixels right there. Good. Now, main, we want to work with the main to that we point to every div that is inside the item should definitely have a pattern of five pixels let's check what we are doing here let's see okay 
we are still working. It will make sense for now. All right. Um, so main main two out should have a width of say hundred this hundred percent position. Uh, remember what I said about this width, the outer area, 100% and this is 1, 2. So it can be aligned, right? can be aligned having the same um, size to be on the same size. All right. Good. Okay, so let's see what we have there. Okay, it's still working on this. So, in a one. Read column, column, should start from one and should spawn to the wagon, color, uh, should say have this, um, this color. Color should definitely be this border left border left should be eight pixels solid yellow. Height should be fifty percent. Position should be relative. Okay. Um, definitely if uh, on the right side to be five pixels. All right. Let's see. We are still working on this. Definitely, we we'll make some changes there. Okay. So bottom should be five pixel. Inner three read row be on two read column should be one margin right. Five pixels. Right. Um, position should be relative and from the right angle, I have ten pixels already. Four. So the grid row should be two span 
span to places V column should be two right in five in five have a height of 200 pixel so let's work with the fan area okay let's save this and see what we have done okay i feel this image right there is meant to have a, a, a shape is meant to have a shape we would uh, work on it and see what we have to do about that All right we'll work on that image and see what we have to do right there i think we should go check on it right away let's see okay that image should definitely have The size It should probably be on the second image right there. Okay. Um, let's see. On pixels, height 180. Um, okay. Um, now we put our release of let's see this okay. the description here. This is not what we are looking for. Check that out. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second one. Check that out later. Let's see why that is that 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 one. Ok, 
Enter. So card one. Okay. Now this image there. How this image there also. We'll check that out later. Okay. Okay. Well, for now, let's work on what we have on the CSS part. So we stopped here, we left over at that point, so we want to work on the front area, so front area, we we'll give it a border, a border of one piece, so solid yellow. Height should be 30 pixels. Background color should be yellow. Color itself should be white. Font family should be. I think we have that in memory. Okay, it's not there. So, Mon the Sirat Mon Sirat Sun Serif. Well, close. Sun save on see what right but in should be five pixel. Color should be white. Area one. Fun area two. Bottom. One pixel. So we need this, this column, okay, uh, 
this color is not that perfect for what we want to give um, let's see for to see one okay perfect perfect um height should be 30 pixels background color should be this should have a background color of this also font family oh this font family is it's a headache to write always seriously i would have uh, definitely used sas when uh, preparing this lecture that is much more easier than always repeating same thing over and over again okay maybe my other lecture uh, uses the new form of technology that makes writing code in css to be much more easier right i'll definitely think about that so let's see what we have here um right here we should give a border okay a border of what um one pixel solid this the height of this 30 pixels background color should be this also okay the same thing so you can align font family should be we have it in memory <laughs> I thought as much. Thought as much. It's becoming somehow too hectic to, to, to type that. Right? Sometimes I uh, might even misspell it. Okay. Alright. Okay, fan area four. Fan area four. We should definitely have something like this also. Right? Okay. Uh, so one pixel solid, solid this. Eight, eight, seven, four, green. Um, a height of thirty percent. Background color should be this to a. Seven four five. The same thing that we have there. And this give it a padding. Let's say five pixels. Color should be FFF, which is white. Okay. That is done. Properly. Right. Now, what do we work with? 
how do we work on right now we should definitely work on the advertisement let's see well let's run this and see what we have here. okay this is what we have there Alright, um, dot add background color should be white, position should be relative. On the left should be a nine three six pixel bottom should be two eighty pixel right I have a border of one pixel solid white. Everything that way should definitely have a height of 50 pixels with 340 pixel border left should be 8 pixel. Okay, 8 pixel solid. This and the yellow right there. Padding should be fifteen pixel. Font size say give it a slot. Font width should be bolder font family. Okay. Let's run it and see what we have there. would make sense now until we are done all right so inner six should be this grid row and three span two Read column should be this height should be one fifty pixel. Count out. Position should be absolute. The card itself border a one pixel solid white. Solid white, white 
should be 80, 87 VH. Have a background of black, background color of white. The inner seven read roll of say three read column of three All right wait. Week five to be this color should be black. Position should be relative from the top, should be 12 pixels from the left, it should be 15 pixel font size. Should be a slash this font width boulder break six. Color should be black. Position should be absolute. Absolute. From the top should be twenty five pixel. From the left should be seven hundred pixel. Bottom. Should have 2200 over there. Right. Uh, font size should be this. Okay. Nice. Font family should be. Okay. We have that in memory. So we can just paste this over there. In that two, background color should be this. Solid should be this border left right eight pixel solid of height. Fifty percent. Okay. Relative. Open the border of practice step. Okay. Left should be six pixel. Right there. Alright, so let's run our code and see what we have now. Okay. It's having, it's making sense a little bit. <laughs> it's making sense a little bit, but we definitely need to work on it. Alright, um, we are still on it. Um, it's making sense a little bit. 
All right, so let's go back to our code. And let's see what we have. Of. All right, um, I want to work with break seven. Remember, there is a class name break seven on um, in the HTML code over there. Mm. Position to the absolute. Absolute. Top should be 20 pixel. Font size should be as large. As large. Font width should be older. This should be there. Card one position should be late. From the top should be 30 pixel. Okay. Oh, close. Okay, he is making a lot of sense. A lot, a lot. We are still working on it. Alright. Position should be position should be absolute. Top should be ten pixel. Ten percent from the left should be twenty two percent. Right there. Transform translates to let's translate this to minus fifty percent right there. Minus fifty percent. Right. Background color. Should be this, All right? Um, we should give it this color yellow. Let's work on the other one. C one. The text that should be inside should be black. Front family to be this. Um, so this is that. Okay, font size be 12 pixel. Right, so let's see. On our code and see what we have there. Wow, it's getting in shape guys is making a lot a lot a lot more sense okay um let's move into it and see now i will um, explain everything we have there all right we just have to write a couple of code and we will be done after off. I was 
pixel it. Top should be 10 pixel. Forty-five percent transform. Okay, transform. Translate to to this minus fifty percent minus fifty percent. C2 color should be black. Font sign like this. Button to be on uh, 5 pixel. Font size should be 12 pixel. Card text. Cartex three position should be absolute. Absolute from the top, we should definitely have it to be um. Let's say three twenty um, percent. Right, the left should be forty pixel. Okay. All right, transform. Okay, translate, translate it to be this. Remember what we did in the last section? Um, okay, so we use this to place the text to be in front. Right to be in front of what we are doing over there. That's the main purpose of this transform. Okay. C3. Color should be black. One family is five font width should be eight hundred pixels. Cut for position. Top two hundred pixel left should be forty pixel. All right, um, card decks four. So we want to work on the um, the unordered list, right? The unordered list. Okay. So list style type, we will make it to be none. List style type, make it to be none. List style type, none. Um, the display should come from reflex okay want to work with the list
So margin right will be 30 pixel. Let's run our code and see what we have here. Okay. It's making a lot of sense. Making a lot of sense. Let's finish it up. In five, so background color should be this. Next border should be one pixel solid white. Height should be two. Absolute left from the left should have three thirty five pixel. All right, okay. The bottom should be six is five pixel. All right, guys. Um, I think we are done here. So let's just uh, go and give a comment to show that everything is okay, right? To actually label the end of grid two. Okay. So this is starting. This way starts the outing part. So let's look at where it is. All right. Good. So we we'll give uh, a comment right here. Agree uh, to outer and here. Good. Okay. Then also it is is okay that way. It's okay that way. So we were able to achieve this. Right, when you refresh it, this is what you get. Okay, so um, we'll continue from where we stopped. In the next video, we'll continue from where we stopped to uh, create the grade three. All right, all right, guys. Um, we actually stopped here, right? And we would like to continue but i just took notice that in the last video i wasn't able to explain uh, the grid two section of the code that we have written so far so let's go into it and let me explain to it so right now we have uh, this div here we start this side and it it starts at main two outer, and you it can see the range at which it starts and where it ends. Here you see this label there, by to where it starts and it ends there. When this is selected, it's selected like this. This is where this one starts and this is where it ends. So, um. This one starts here. Let's check where it ends. All right, so it ends there, right? And this one also, it starts here, and it also ends there. Good. Um, so we created a two div, 
be the outer container, the inner container. We created another one which holds the, uh, uh, we'll call this inner one. It's going to hold the latest news that we have here. This latest news. As well as the um, view all. So this uh, break five, this paragraph tag, which is break five, also have uh, another paragraph that is inside this. So we can be able to manipulate it from the CSS, right? Moving it to this direction, right? So we created it to be on the same line, so it can have the same background, okay? And that's clear. So it's named uh, break five, take notes, because we are also working with our CSS through the class names. So that is for that, right? So we have this inner, inner two, which have to do with the followers area that is here. Good. So we we'll move further and this is inner three. Inner three actually holds the card, right? On, uh, Holds it to card. It's like a tag that holds this tag, this tag, and this tag. Uh, not the tag actually. This card and this card. Right, I've created here. And right here, we also have another tag that is inside. So this one is the first tag. This starts there and here. Good. All right. Okay, and we have the image, we have the card itself, which has to do with this, this right up right there. And we also have, um, so when we move downwards, we have the right up, as you can see, John Doe, and the rest of them, which holds this one. Okay. Okay. And for this tag so this inner four was replicated so we have another card this deals with the second card right there. good so this for this I'm explaining it the same way having the image same with the first tag right at the top also the description right here that cover this area from here back Now, this inner five is another part of the grid item, right? Remember in the video we showed previously, um, which was captioned advanced, advanced uh, tactics or advanced techniques, right? For creating the wireframe um, grid container that we did the one with so many colors that we are using to create this website. Yeah, this was named in R5. So this holds this area, which is covering this part. Which is covering this part right here. Right? Good. So inside of that, we have an inner, inner uh, tag, which is holding this. So we named the fan area one, two, three, Four. and we have advertisement which holds this right there this here, this. Okay. good all right so uh, right there we did some sort of inline css the code let's move over to it and let me explain quickly before we move towards um, before we can create the uh, degree three. All right, so in this image, we give it a border radius of 50%, right? Border radius of 50%, that's what John do. That it should be circled this way, this John do. It should be circled that way. Have a width of 30, height of 30, margin should be, there should be a space at the right. So 10 pixels, right? And for the text, this is what we use. 
So the front family will this a position relative, right? Position relative, so we can be able to move it uh, to the direction that we want it to be, right? So everything can be arranged in a nice order, right? Right for that, and we use the bottom from the bottom says so thirty pixels left, forty pixels, and we use a list right here. Now the use of this list was actually used in this right okay, for the John Doe and these two numbers right there. So remember that whatever we did here on this card was replicated on this part. So if I'm explaining this part, it means that this is also a replica card of this. Okay, so whatever we did here is the same thing as this. We just had to duplicate the code and we run it to make sure everything is in place. Okay, good. So having said that, we use uh, on order list here. And this unordered list, we really want to make sure that we can be able to move it around. And we have a list which have this number having the form family, right? All right, so let's go to the CSS. This is just a replica of the first card. Now let's go to the CSS. Let me explain it as fast as possible. Good. Okay. Right. Good. So the codes all start here. So just like we said in uh, that advanced techniques video, right? When we are creating the plan, right? Call it the wireframe of the website. Good. So this we gave a display of the outer container to the display read have a height of 600 pixels to actually contain those items that is inside the container. We gave a padding of 55 pixel width of 1, 2, so you can align with other width that should be inside the website. All right, so we have a margin of auto on every side, right? You know what I mean? Then the grid, 50 pixels on the row. 200 pixels on the row and also also on the number of columns and it should be in three columns that's what it means right in the previous video actually explained that right and we give a gap of 10 pixels on both sides on the row and on the column good so right here we said that the main two should actually point to all the items that is inside there and right there, we said that the padding should be five pixels. Okay, so this out and uh, main out and we give the width to be hundred percent. Right, position should be relative. The bottom should be thirty pixels. And that is what we have. There. Okay, so inner one. So the inner one we made. Uh, we have taken note of right in the HTML code. I pointed what inner one was and what it stands for. Right. We give it a grid column of one, uh, one, and it should span two. So on the column area, it should start on one, right, and it should span two areas. Okay, that was how we were able to span two areas to add an image there. Good, and the background color should be white. Color white uh, should be black. Then border left should be eight pieces solid red, solid red. Yellow is color actually. Okay, so give it a height of 50 pixels. Position should be relative so we can be able to move it around, right? Um, then on the right, five pixels, bottom five pixels as well. We also did the same thing for the grid row, it should start from two span two areas. The grid column, it should be located, situated around the first. That's why we have in a three. So we say that on the road area, it should pick from two, right? And it should span two areas and it should be situated around 
grid column one. That's what it is. So the margin right with five pixels and uh, the position should be relative, right? And from the right side, since the position is relative on the right side, it should probably have a space from the right side to be 10 pixels. Okay. So the inner four we have there to be two, right? And it should span two items, two items on that area, and it should be situated or it should be located around column two. So the inner five, we said the height should be 200 pixels, right? Good. All right. Nice. Now remember this height that we have there have to do with the height that um, we made reference to from the HTML uh, element that should be there, right? Okay. So the fan area one, uh, like you know, it's holding this part, right? Right there. So we probably want to give it a border of, let's say, this color, one piece of solid color. The height of this, I can call up this color, that is the text of that. The family, uh, the font family should be this, right? And padding five pixels. Good. So that is just a replica of whatever we have here. So we have one, two, three, four. We just duplicated it and we replicated the same thing. Right? Pretty easy. Right? Okay, so let's move to one. So this is a short form for advertisement, which is holding this area right there. Good. Now we say that the background color should be white, position should be relative, left on the left side, it should probably move on uh, the space of 936 pixels. Now the bottom side should be eight, uh, 280 from the bottom to move to that area and the border should be one pixel solid white. Height 50 pixels width 340 wide, right? The border left, uh, we should probably have the border left to be this. So the border left was is how it came about the border left right there. The padding 15 pixels font size it should be extra large font width it should be this uh, font family it should be this also good and in the inner six we said that the grid rule should start from row three and it should span two items and it should be found around column right so the height should be 150 pixels. So the card out should be absolute, right? Um, the card itself should have this property height, um, 87 VH, right? View height, okay? Um, then the same thing with inner seven, it should be located around three, good. Um, and for grid column. So we also have this break. This break has to do with the text that is written here. This text is here. View and the text, right? Don't forget, you can make reference to your HTML code and look at uh, those properties that that's really it. That is nice. Good. So there's something I want to explain here. So in this card text one, which is holding uh, some of the right up, we said that the position should be absolute from the top. This, this, and transform. Remember, we use this transform way. We were holding this right. We are doing this image in the previous video we have done before, right? Now say that translate trans, uh, transform, the translate should be minus 50, right, on X axis and on Y axis, so that it can be able to appear at the front. When you take it off, on every element that we have here is not going to work. So that is the need for the transform right there. I'll give it a background color of this, right? 
and this deals with the text. So this is just a replica of what we have there. So without further ado, I think we are done right there. So let's move to uh, creating our grid three. So let's say we have a div right here. First of all, let's uh, form the habit of commenting. So grid three starts here. All right, and we have this part. Let's name it. Okay. You would probably know the name we want to give this. So name right three outer. And inside of this, we probably want to create an additive. Okay. We name this main three. All right, so inside of this main three, we want to actually create another div, and that div that we create will be called flat one. Right, good. So flat one, right here. So inside of this flat one, right there, we are going to have a div called card out, right? Card out. Card out. And another div called cap. Good. Um, we'll give an image here in this card. All right. So, um, let's pick an image type. This should be perfect. Copy this. And come in. Good. Right here, we make the width to be 400 pixels. It's a thief here called card one. Card one inside of that thief probably have another thief called card text. Uh, 
add text one. Right? So right there. We would have this code is C1 is the code C1 in this business business underneath it's closed and we'll come down here and create another one C2 no it should be the card first card text two. inside of this card text 2 of C1 C2 will name this general right first twenty forty five right and beneath that we should give a break to break here uh, is space before the next card that we have there. Right? Great. And underneath, so let's see. Underneath, we should have another card right there. So the Add text three. Add text three. And inside of this should have a default C three. Form a H2 tag and add this text login. Underneath, we have this tag. Right, so that is for that area. Probably should give a break here. 
right and in this area we'll form a description Give a height, say one ninety pixel. Right there. All right. This is okay. So we give a div okay. class. We call this. Four right so that should be the cartex four which have this so inside of that that takes for we would have an image we give this image to be this But I will use of this. So it is down right here. Height should probably thirty pixel. Margin right should be ten pixel. Right. And inside of this will be a paragraph tag. Of let's say relative work 
going to be thirty pixel. Left should be forty pixel. Right. Nice. For this John do to do. So create an unordered list here. And that is an ordered list. Probably give it a star. A star which have a position to be related. Bottom. From the left should be two thirty pixel. Star. Should be font family. Which have a okay. zero. I want to duplicate that there. Looks that is done properly, right? Okay. Alright, so we'll create another div right here. Okay. And we'll name this flat two. Flat two. Okay. Inside of it we we'll have another div called cut out. Just like we did previously. Inside of this, we also have a div called card. All right, then we add an image here. Let's use some image we have used before. Okay, I'll pick this one. Say hundred pixels. Right. Create a div called card one.
inside of that card one we would have card text card text one right there which have this Text right. Then right. First twenty forty five. Break. Break. Underneath, we have right up there. Write any text you want there. If you wish, it is up to you. Right. But well, for this video, we just want to use this right as a proof of concept. Okay. That is done. Right. We'll move to this next stage. So big here. So we create a description right here. Description. Give it a border. one pixel solid this color we did high 219 pixel Four. 
use this image user.jpg is a new folder so make use of it you install right here folder radius A height of 30 pixel margin right to be 10 pixel. All right, so we create a Paragraph that give a font family of points select some save. some save. Left should be forty pixel. Name it Judo. Okay. Underneath we create a list. Or that list. Right there, we'll give it the style of position. So we can be able to move it to any direction we then that it should move. Right here, give it a star from family months. See that sun say. All right. What next? We should create another flat. Create another flat right there. So let's see what we are doing. This is how this is going to look like for now. Okay. So right here we create a flat called three. They will put standing news. Standing news right there. Create a flat court for flat four.
inside of it we'll name another flat another uh, div called cell one all right inside of this cell one we would probably name this give this some style some style to the position relative bottom 130 pixel left should be minus 10 pixel background color should be white border should be 1 pixel solid white height should be 100 pixel the width should be 402 pixel All right underneath we have an image And this image, we can as well use this over here. Just a proof of concept, right? You can add up your image when you have the file and use the image that suits the same size and position, right? So you would not encounter some sort of complication. Right? You can actually use the Microsoft Paint application that is on your system to resize the image. Okay. Okay. So width of hundred height of um, 98 pixel give it a start that issue floats to the left all right So inside of this, we create a div called card one. And this div called card one will give it some stuff. Some stuff. Should be position on relative on the left side should be seventy pixel. Seventy pixel give another div code inside the x1 so inside this x1 we have another div code in one okay and right here 
give it the star star code color which are this it's for to be a four zero generally first in chief of the five okay this one holds this one we create another one here so text one we should probably call this one business business and we'll duplicate it okay so these two This business only have a font only have font width which is bold why this have this color the date on it the next one have right up lower our color which is this alongside position don't forget this position to be this top should be forty pixel. So this would have a paragraph tag. Paragraph tag over there. Remember these two, this is the outer and this is the main. So that's why you have to be very careful. So you don't get to miss what you are doing. Okay. We want to create flat five. So we create another div right there. Call this flat five. Flat five. Style should be have a height of this. 
100 pixel. Right. Should create another one called cell one. Under this cell one. We have some properties here which we have a position of relative bottom to be 130 pixel left should be 7 pixel background color would be white border one pixel solid white height would be hundred pixel width is four hundred and two pixel. Okay. Image source. We can use this image right there. Okay. Let's use this image. Right, we give this a width 100 pixel height 28. How this style that should float to the left on the name that we would have a card. So we can copy this right there, this card. This card. So copy. And we paste right there. The same thing. That is for that. So let's check. So we we'll move for that to creating. The last one we did was flat five. So let's create flat six. So we we'll create another div here, and we name this div flat six. All right. Mm. 
and so I do this. We name this the flat six in flat six in. So is the inner one. Right, so we name a difficult cell. Cell one. Two. So we'll give it this style of to have the background color. Border with one pixel solid. Give an image here. image let's use this one copy it and paste Should have a width to be hundred pixel and the height should be ninety-eight pixel. Star. Start to have a position. Inside of this, inside text one, right. Inside of it, we would have a plus name in one. of stop font with should be bold should be business function That is done. He's holding this. We should create something similar to this. Right there. But this will change. 
this will change. This will change also. This one is going to have it. January first, twenty forty five. Create something like this too. Let's see. This will change. This will change. This year will change also. to be negative from the top should have 40 pixels color should be this Side of it is going to contain the paragraph tag. And this is loading. So let's copy this. Okay. If that is done, this will be this. This will be this. Yeah, we create this cell. This cell. Back called cell. Inside this cell, uh, we need to have this. I think it's a replica of this. I guess so. And we have to paste it here. Yeah. 
right okay if that is done okay let's see Should also paste one there. Okay. Based on the one. Okay. Based on the one. So that is for that. is the end of the HTML area for grid three. So let's go over to the CSS part of it. We have to work on grid three. This is part of it. Okay. Let's look at our code and see what we have. <laughs> so this looks terrible. By the time we are done with this, you see the change. So, remember what I said, leave a comment. For this grid three starts here. Starts here. So right here we say dots dots mean three. Okay, this three. Should be weak. Padding should be five pixels. The width should be one thousand hundred pixel. Margin should be auto. Width should be auto. You need a gap of say 10 pixels. 10 pixels. You understand what I'm doing right here? Here we are not giving any specified uh, low size. 
this is automatic right that is how say auto auto and it consists of just two rows why this consists of three columns size of the width now main three okay if five pixel main main three out okay out the position of say Left should be ten pixels and flat two should be have a height of let's say three hundred pixels. Position should be deleted. The left side, you should have seven pixel flat three should have a height of six sixty pixel background color should be white position should be related. The left side should be 14 pixels. The bottom should be 19 pixels. The border is going to be 1 pixel solid white. Right. Should have a height of 50 pixels. The width should be three forty pixel. Border left should be eight pixel. Border left should be eight pixels. Height, I think of the height to have a size of fifty pixels. The width, okay. What are the eight pixels? Sorry, okay. The mistake somewhere. I made a mistake there. So we have to go and collect it. See how to pattern should be fifteen pixels. Font size should be X large. Font width should be bold. So 
one, two. Right. We move further to flat four. So flat four should have this. The height should be 100 pixels. Flat four. Want to work with flat four? Work with flat five, six, seven, eight. Um, flat five. Flat. Flat six in background color should be this border should be one pixel solid height. How we height of seven ten pixels. The width should be three forty pixel. Position should be relative. From the left angle should be ten pixels. Bottom should be one ten pixel. Again, should be ten pixel. So one border should be one pixel solid white. The height should be hundred pixel. Width. Should be three fifteen pixel. Right. So I need to go make this more comp comprehensive or understandable. Alright, yeah. Okay, this is good. Um so right here we have the main outer tag, which is the most outer tag, right? holding every content, every item that is inside the grid. And we have the main. Now we have flat three, right? Flat three, holding the first item. Now we say that it should have a tag right here. Good. And in this tag comes, okay. All right, so while that is done, um, we can go on our code and see what we have there. So when you go on this, okay, let's see. See this? You see? All right, you see? This is three. Now let's go to the code and some sort of explanation there. Alright. Good, good, good. Oh, 
okay this is the most alternative that is out there right and it starts there and it ends here actually inside good and we also have another div right there which is the main div we have flat one right uh, which ends here yes enter okay and the flat one have a card out a div called card out this most outer div that holds the card where the card the card is this this is the card right there okay so it holds this card having this image we made this image this image this image right so this is a replica of this anything we explain for here we explain here it's also the same with this right here good okay so we have our text right for the business holding this holding this holding this that too okay so these are the text right card holding text have the image is all there and we also have this down part which is called the description area this down part that you have here the small image in a circular form the name and the numbers it's called in this one right there okay and you can see the properties right there okay and you can see this also that we're giving to the it so it can stay normal so this is a replica of the first flat one right the same thing no changes at all then we have trend news right there which is this when you move up here and I see the trend news good so we have this flat four which is holding this right holding this and it's a replica of one two three four and we also have for this also and that is why it's much more plenty many right and every other thing so we have this a replica of that right also this this it's a lot is a lot right so we have it to the end okay that's for the cache then it's the same thing now let's go to the css now um, from the css part okay so we see our code starts from here we give it a display of grid padding of 5 pixels, a width of 1200. I've explained this countless number of times why that is the case, and a margin of auto on all sides. So we gave it auto um, for all the rules, both the first rule and second rule, and auto for the three colors. And we gave it a gap of 10 pixels, 10 pixels on both sides both for rows and columns and we want to deal with the item we want to deal with the main the div three items that is inside of it we say the padding should be five pixels okay. so the main three outer positions relative and from the bottom side it should move upward with 320 pixels right there and flat one which is holding the card right this card right here, this card. It the height should be 300 pixels, position should be relative, and from the left part it should be minus 10. Okay, and also with this, so opposite is the case. Okay, so we have flat three, which is holding the image, and this is what we have. We say the height should be. 60 pixels background color should be white position relative so we can be able to move it and 
this is what we have there okay on the properties right there okay i want to see if there's any changes right there no nothing different okay so okay so that is it for this video in the next video we'll talk about um creating the fourth grid okay the fourth grid i hope you enjoy this video um if that is said let's move to the next video right away Thank you. all right guys um let's move to the next grid okay so we would like to create the next grid uh, formally we uh, stopped in grid 3 and we were able to achieve this right here okay right so since that is done let's move to the next grid now right here we would like to create a so first of all let's give a comment here and let's call this grid 4 start here okay grid 4 start start here good now we'll create a um a tag here and we'll call this tag main for outer right main for outer and inside of this we would have another grid name name for good inside of this still we should have a tag called story one right so this is one of the item that is inside this container so story one good now in this story one right here we would have um another tag inside of this story one and we would call that to be called out we want to create a tag called card out over here now card out okay that is done um inside this tag out card out Give it a style of uh, give it a style position should be relative the position will be relative the bottom would be two fifty pixels. um so that is for that now inside of this we have a tag called test test over there all right so the next tag we have here is test And in this test, we give it a style. Style have a position to be relative. Left should be eight pixel. Bottom. Be 60 pixel. All right. Okay. So this would have an image called 
uh, text image which is being enclosed with a tag over there so it's going to look like this All right the right here is going to have the star still. To be, um, to have a background color, background color say white. All right. Then. Have a width right here, five ten pixel. Should I have a height of three fifty pixels? Border should be one pixel solely. White inside of here, we're going to have an image, All right? So we'll pick this image right here. Let's close this, okay? Um, which image are we going to? Right here, she probably is this one. So, paste it in. All right, in this image, we are going to give it a width of say 14 pixels. Okay. Should be three sixty eight pixel. All right, so it should have a star which floats this to the left. Because it's a card, we are actually trying to create a card here, right? So it's going to come in that form on the net, on the net that would have a tag right there called card. This tag is going to have a star with border one pixel solid white. Okay, the width is going to be thirty-one point six view width. Okay, height should be fifty six V H. Right, it should probably have a position of relative. Right, from the left side should have a movement shift to be let's say six, four, ten pixels. Background color should be white. Okay, bottom should be three fifty pixels. Okay, that should be that. Uh, 
follow guys on the hair okay on that this we would have cut one All right cut one so we would have a different card name that is going to hold that's going to be part of the card so we have the outer card right as the name uh, which is card and we are going to have card one two three you know uh, which is going to hold the text that we are going to move within the card that is inside I don't really know if you understand what I'm trying to say but it's really going to make sense when you see this okay so call this card one inside of this we have card text card text one If dot c1 business so this one holds this on the next that we'll have a div for card two card text two This one is going to have C2. So this January 1st, 2045. Only need that. We're going to have card dex 3. Only need that. We have C3. Yeah, before this, we would give a break right there. Okay. Nice. So we would have a H2 tag right there. And we we'll definitely write this text. Just a proof of concept, you can write anything, but for this video, this tutorial, we are going to use this. Okay, doesn't matter the uh, text you use, it's still going to work the same way, it's still the same, the same thing. But for proof of concept, we I just intend to use this. Now, when you are using this login text, you can just type this first word right here, login and and press enter, just like enter. It will give you a long bunch of words okay but it's too long and i definitely don't want to start the backspacing right to delete some of those texts that is why i i just need a small text so that's why i'm writing it myself okay because in this card we don't want much text over here just want something small to show a group of concepts what we are trying to do over there and we will be good to go okay that's anything 
right? So that is being done. Alright, so over here we we'll have add text for add text for right there. Alright, but first we have to give a div which holds. Uh, which give some sort of border bottom to this description over here. So create something like this over here. Give it a style to the border bottom. One pixel sorry. So we want to create the user uh, um, there, just like we did in the previous one. We want to create John John uh, Joe Do Joe Do. Okay, so this is image right there. User dot JPG Joe Do. <laughs> it's a pretty funny name, isn't it? Sounds like great British, right? Right, so give it a margin of 10 pixels right here. Position should be relative, so you can be able to move it to um, our rightful position that we tend to do. Okay. So this is going to have more over here. And okay, We're going to have a position here also. It should be relative. The bottom should be minus fifteen pixels. 
on the left should be 40 pixel to do Over here, we should have a star. Position should be relative. From the left, should be two dead pixels. to pay for duplicate this that is being done okay since that is done let's see great so from here, we'll continue with the next item, which is called Story 2. Story 2. So we'll create a div over here um, called Story 2. Story 2. Inside of it, we'll call another div for not call actually create if you say call it a programming term right so it's create so we would create a new tag inside of it and inside of that also we would create another one Story in one inside of this story in right. So this is going to have a height of let's say sixty pixels. color of white position should be relative from the right should be minus 40 pixels Bottom should be 450 pixels. Border should be one pixel solid white. It should have a height of 50 pixel. The width of 40 pixels for the left should be 8 pixels 8 pixels solid yellow 
थोड़े वेल्थ स्पीड फोन भी है Change that is done. Good. Uh, the text right of that this is enclosed with its news later. News later. Over there. Good. Uh, this hold this. This one hold this. Right, we just want to show just to be sure that everything is back under control. We are watching what we are doing. Good, so create a tag right here. I'll call it story. Into this is definitely going to have a start with the background color of white. Side of this, the uh, height should be some real pixel. Width should be 340 pixel. Position should be 80. The right should be minus 40 pixel. Side of this is going to have a text. And in this text, we are going to use this. Let's see. Okay. Stop. Should have a font family of this Montserrat Montserrat Sound Serif Just to see 
each at Diane. That is done. Great. Uh, definitely going to have a break over there. Good. So let's run up and see what we have here currently. Wow, things are really going in shape a little bit okay so this is the card we are talking about that we want to create so we definitely want to fix it around this area okay so we are still working on it on the code um so guys for that right Good. So over here we we'll have a bag called sign up. Sign up. So input type should be text. This code. your email plus email um, okay to type to the code button not submit you know you can um, choose different option that is there based on the type of button you choose to use so you should be sign up within boldly sign up We're going to have this class over there called sign. So we can be able to design it from um, the HTML area. If that is being done, we should definitely give it a break there. So right there. We would have a text. Let's copy this text over here. Seems not to be there, so we should just write it again. Okay, we don't have to be lazy about it, just write it again. I'm taking this very slowly, right? So I don't tend to miss out on any of the code to avoid complications All right uh, because this is a more advanced part that needs to be taken with uh, the precautionary horizon precautionary um, measures not measures actually a way something of that sort okay 
so we really have to be careful as a developer you need to be careful you have to think before you write your code and make sure you don't make silly mistakes because even a semicolon or a dot or a comma is going to really devastate the code you are writing and that can lead to an issue so you really need to be careful with what you were doing okay So this is so it's Oops. All right. Um. So we we'll create a new div right there. I will call it story three. Story three over here. Nice one, isn't it? Story three. Inside of this story three, we have um story in. Story in. And inside of this definitely have story in one star should be should give a height of sixty pixels at first background color should white position should be related from the right should be minus 40 pixel bottom should be 200 pixels border should be one pixel solid white should have a a height of 50 pixel all right now Not really. Let's give it a bit. Three forty pixels. Border left should be eight pixel. Eight pixels solid yellow. Adding 15 pixel front size should be as large font width should be bolder. Font family. 
I guess you can um, know which of them we are going to use. Let's see that. Sans serif. Here we name it tag tag bridge. On the next, would have a tag called. Story into okay. And this story into is going to hold the body tag. So right here we give a style to old background color. side will be minus 40 pixel. Bottom will be 196 pixel. Padding will be 10 pixel. Right. Deep. Body pack. Tag one. Body click tag inside of this. This science. Now we have to duplicate this. Let's say let's have five of this. Okay. Take it with this. So can be in a form a good line. I see. Psychology uh, Psychology You know and lots more anything you want to change you change it there okay. Smudge All right, so that has been done Remember, this is uh, main outer four. This is main main four, right? So we, I think you guessed it. We are going to create another item called story four, right there. Story four, right? So the story four. Right inside of this, 
we're going to have a cell called cell 1 cell 1 over here position relative bottom minus 50 pixel left on the left side should be minus 9 pixel background cover would be white Solid white. Have a height of 100 pixel. Width will be 400 pixel. Inside of this, we would have an image. And this image is going to. We are going to use this. That was in memory, right? So we just had to copy it. You know, it was on the clipboard memory. So we just had to copy it and use it over there, right? That's nice. Wait, uh, we should definitely give this a style over here. And this style should float to the left. Inside of this, we want to create a div called Card one over here. Card one let's see. Um So we'll do something similar from here, just like we have something like this. We we'll use that concept and we'll form another card here. So we we'll say card one over here. Remember, we have to be very careful with the code we are writing so we don't have to make any mistake. To avoid time of debugging the code and looking for the issue or where the problem is coming from. So inside text. One oh. inside of this is going to be in one.
business. So we want to copy this and paste it in three places. You have to change this to two. Right? Change this to two as well. Changes of groups and three, three as well, right? And definitely want to change the text that is inside of it. Twenty fourteen. Inside of this is going to have uh, so this is going to have four to be this. This is going to have the style to the color. Remember this one is mostly bold, right? Okay. From the previous uh, item we have created it shows what we intend to do right there position should be elective Forty pixel. The color should be three four three eight. This, which is black color over there. We should definitely give paragraph over here for this slogan. Let me show you what I was trying to say. Now, when you see logging, this is what is going to happen. You see, a bunch lot of code, and it's too much, a huge amount of code right there. So we definitely don't want to do this. That is why we are just writing it, right? You see this? don't want to do that that's why we have to you know write it by ourselves okay that has been done so so one two three four five this one holds the outer one. Um, let's run our code. We haven't started with the CSS yet. Right? So when you run this, this is what you get for now. Alright? We haven't started with the CSS right now. But it's soon going to make sense. Okay. This is what we have right there. And when we work on our CSS, we definitely see what we are doing. And it's going to make a lot, lot more sense over there. Right? So we just have to be patient. We'll move to that. It's a whole lot of code over here. We just have to be patient. We should be to go with it any moment from now. Okay. Alright, so create a cell to the cell called cell two inside of this. And we should have a star. Position. Bottom. 
minus 50 pixels on the left part to be 240 pixels definitely have a background color say white border should be 1 pixel solid white right a height of 100 pixel a width of let's say 400 pixels about there so inside of this definitely going to have an image and let's see use white let's see if it's going to give us a huge amount okay it's not there you definitely have to copy it can't really remember the name all right look at it here so we'll just copy this it's a it's not um an easy name to remember Okay, so we paste it here. Alright, so that is for that. That is being done. Definitely want to work on this image. Give it the width of, let's say, 100 pixel over here. 100 pixels. Give it the height of, let's say, uh, 98 I guess it is down over here to float to the left float to the left down should be position related left be 70 pixel text text one G in one this is definitely we give it a font width to be bold Front width to be old right there, and we we'll caption this business. Okay, inside. Definitely don't want to use the uh, palette over there. So, for that, let's copy this. We only have to make some changes. So,
is it's going to have a color value. Color and it's definitely going to be black. Right. Good. We change it to January first. 20.45 This is going to be like this position should be relative pixel and the color should be black the text over there is going to be this okay load I saw to work on the next item that is in place next item that should be in place and that should be uh, okay Seven right in it. Story seven inside of it, we are going to have cell three. Right here, uh, call this style position should be. one all right right should be eight thirty pixel background color will be white should give it the border of one pixel solid white a height of 100 pixel width of 400 pixel Right here should come with the image and the image name. Do we still have it in memory? Oh, it's not there. Let's copy it from the top.
All right. So um, we should give we size this because it's going to look bigger. So we should make it to be hundred pixels there. Height should be ninety-eight pixel. Pixels style should as it floats to the left. Right. Right here, we will name this to be part one. Having a style called position relative left on the left seventy pixel right as for card one good side of this card one we would have inner text so let's see if we can copy this three in here and do some changes to save us time i believe you get a concept on this part okay. didn't copy it properly So here would be this, All right? And I'd like to do some sort of changes over there. So right here, we have this to be the same, okay? Um, the next one, which holds the date, is going to have the same color. And the last one is going to be the same over right there. So let's move to the next one. So the same way we did, we count five div. One, two, three, four, five. Remember this is the outer, main outer, and this is the main right over here so we want to work on the last leaf probably the last leaf which would be um which will be eight let's see over here. so all we have to do let's Copy this. And go through it. So copy. And paste it here. So this will be eight. This should be four over there. 
over here should have a position move to minus 80 right and on the left part this should be okay let's make this for over there the same color the same white background 100 pixels and the image also it's going to be okay over there right the text also is okay just have to be careful what you are doing so we don't make some sort of complications One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. so let's go to our code and let's see what we have there this is what we currently have Let's start working on our CSS. So go above right there and work on our CSS. Which is for grid four. system is a little bit slow and it's a huge amount of code right there all right so we definitely want to give a comment so we say click for start here. So name for this should be great. Padding should be five pixels. Cells. The margin should be auto read should be auto auto on the low and when we have to lose over the here create a three column a gap should be ten pixels on the low and ten pixels on the column. Changes on all items which falls under the container. This should be right. Zero pixel. Story one should be grid area one slash one one on the row one on the column it should span two on the row and it should span two on the column right there. 
and this is situated around item one. So the email here we want to work with the inbox, right? And should have a height of let's say 40 pixels. The width should be two to five pixel one family should be months and see that sun save padding on the left Floats to the left, border right to the non. Nice. We have a sign. Um, so the sign signifies uh, the button, right? So the button that we, uh, the name that we give to the button, the class name that was given to the button was sign. So we want to work on it now. We say it should be 40 pixels. The width should be 90 pixels. Right, font, family. Definitely want to copy this. So the footer here, when we click that, and right there, we want to make sure that the click tag has a pattern color of this. With the five pixel, the width would be eighty pixel. Border would be one pixel. Solid six C. Right, color should be white. For pure identification, it should be center. We have this on the clipboard, so we can just copy it there again. Margin should be three pixel. I want to make the size to the base. Fourteen pixel. So footer click that. So when the uh, the user over, I stick the mouse, use the mouse and 
point towards the item. This should happen. We want to make the background color to be this. should be pointer. So for the back, give it a display of weak. Gap, we need to fix some grid. Will be auto. This will be auto, auto, auto. Down the it will be body click that background color. Text online should be at the center. How this? have a background color of this 6C color should be white and cursor should be should be pointer So let's give a comment to this and go ahead and go on our code and see what we have. All right. So having done this, see what we have done. Good. Okay. This is nice. You see this? This is nice, very nice. We are done with this grid for this work for hat of over. See this? See? Very nice. Alright. So let's go to the code. So we have this that starts from here, main for outer, right? It ends there. And over here it's holding the main. We have this which ends there too. 
So in the first one, we say we want to give it a card which holds this this card right there. So in that case, we give it the position to move from the bottom to be 250. Right, so it can be on the right position. Giving it the test right also to move it this. So we say test it holds this starts from here and it ends there. Inside of this text is holding our image right here. This image right here. And we say that it should have some description. This holds our description, right? Which is this this over there. And right here we give it a border of white. The width should be this, the height should be this. And the movement, right, is a card. So we have to arrange it to be on the right order. And we have this inner text right there. So it can sit properly. So we have the downside, which have to do with this part of it. Okay. okay. And I've explained this part before. So we just have to pick it and reuse it. All right, so this one, this story is another item that holds the sign up area from this part, the news and the sign up area. That is for the, that is the grid that holds that part, right? And these are the properties that we are giving to it, which, which were um, similar to whatever we have here, right? So everything can be in uniform, okay? And for this, this item over here holds the tag, right? It holds the tag, and these are the properties. So this, this, you see, that over there is this, right? And underneath, we have the tag that is under there. Okay. That is cool. So this is what this. This 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 is something similar to what we did before it holds one two three four four cards that were placed underneath this speaker tag over there so that was it for this video and in the next video we we'll would go through the last part which has to do with the footer area right which is the last tag the last grid right and is the footer area so having said that um please guys if you have any question let me know in the q and a section i really love to get your honest review for this course and if that has been said let's move into the next section right what's up mate actually we've come uh, to the last part right of this practical demonstration right so in this video i'm going to walk you through um the footer right on how you can be able to write the code to create the footer area of the 
real life project that we are working on. All right. So uh, let me show you something. Now I should have done this earlier, most especially when we have done this. We can as well watch the differences. Right. It looks similar. This. Um, appearance right it looks similar with this isn't it okay so also this it looks similar it's actually from the old project we have done under the advanced technique module right so if that is said um this part we are going to work on the footer which is this area right here Okay, so the footer comes in four columns, right? In this manner, it's going to come in this form. Okay, so um, we we'll definitely work on the footer area. In the last uh, class, we stopped from here. We left up from here in the code, right? And this is what we arrived at. Okay. Now let's uh, get started and let's uh, start the footer area. Okay, and that will be the end to the website for the practical real life demonstration that we are talking about. So, without uh, further ado, let's uh, move into it right away. All right, now we want to create a div right here, like we've always done. Okay, and we'll name this div to be footer outer, just like what we're doing, right? And we'll create another div. We'll call this div to be footer, right? Uh, right so right here we'll give it a style which have this property to be um the width right it's going to be 100 pixels um okay so right there inside of this we are going to also give this a name called footer one okay that has been done right now inside of this we would actually create a header tag so header tree tag and definitely we will give this a class name to be footer index it's going to have uh, the names of the footer head footer head text. okay so right there we'll write something say so get in touch okay great get in touch to have a break right there right there we will create the page tag here it's the property to be our front family months see that to be this okay straight me with this
we definitely would have to do this repeat this okay okay all right uh, we would give this number Four, five, six, seven. You know the V number, okay? It's just any number at random, okay? Um, okay. That is done. Right there. Okay. Um, this should contain email address. Right. So this holds this. Good. So we we'll create another div right there, and we'll call this footer two. Footer two. Inside of this, we will definitely have an header tag. I'll call this footer head text. Popular news. Right here, uh, we would have that called card one. Style should be position. And inside of it, you would have inside text over there. Side text one. Side of this we would have in one this in one is going to have a property to be to have a font width of bold font size. Over here, 
we are definitely going to repeat this. Okay. So this should be in one. This should be in two. Right, and here the test is going to change, and also with each property. Right, so we're going to give this a color. Now, um, writing a capital letter right there is not case sensitive. I just like the habit, right, of writing in small letter, right? I'm kind of used to that, okay? Even when I do some sort of programming on PHP, JavaScript, which have to um, enable the programmer to be sensitive when you're dealing, dealing with uh, uh, text, that means key sensitivity. Okay, so I tend to be used to that manner of approach when I am writing my code. So in HTML, it doesn't count. You can write in capital letter, right? But I'm just used to it. Alright, so. Right here to be January first, twenty forty-five. Right, nice. Right here would have. Right. Um, from the top, again to the forty pixel. Right. Okay. So here we are going to have the paragraph, uh, which holds some text, and. You definitely know the test we are going to add there. Log them. Logan. Let me use this. Okay, I prefer this. I prefer writing it. It's a long text. Over there.
So this is holding this, this, this. Nice. That is being done. Then we should click. Actually, paste it there. And then, what we should have another one. Okay. But this time around. We are not going to have this much space over here. No much space over there. So this is holding this. This is holding this. This is holding this. And down the needs over here. But uh, we are definitely going to create footer to footer. Um, wait, let's check. Should it be footer two or footer one? So this footer one, footer two. All right. You see this? This footer one, this footer two, so we should create the third footer over there. Good. Um, Alright, so we want to create this footer, so we'll say div and we'll name it footer three over here. And inside of this, should have a tag, head tag over here. Um, let's call this footer head text. Cutie. Done beneath would call this footer. This is a short form. Um, oh, oops. Would have done it. So this is going to contain all tags. Right? So tag one, tag two, tag three, 
up to 12 packs over here. Now this is going to have a page. And call this footer click tag. In this science you can change it to whatever you want all right so we we'll have 12 of this so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve let's go ahead and rename it so two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay. Um, I don't think this will be enough. Let's make more. Okay. Um, That is done. We should have that one. Um, we should create the fourth footer, which is going to hold some images. So we would create some sort of grid, um, grid images over here, like. A grid gallery, right? That is the word grid gallery. So we're going to create a grid gallery over here. So for the four is created inside of it we are going to have an history tag and we'll call this footer head text link link car photo. the needs here we are going to create this tag right there um we'll call this um image grid you see There's the right name to give it i'm going to create like an image gallery um using the grid the grid terms, right? So grid this and we we'll call this image one. Okay, and instead of this, it's going to have an image. So let's use one of this. Okay, which of them do you think we should use? Okay. would be 100 pixel and the width should 
the let's say 100 pixel as well oh close If that is done, we should duplicate this line. Right? Now you can name it in a chronological order in a sequence, but for this video, I'm not doing all of that. Um, but it's still going to work, right? Um, but I'm doing something different right here, but it's still the same proof of concept. You can follow that if you want. If you wish to, all right. Let's close the gap. Remember this. Is futa outer and this is futa right tag so right here before this we would create we have to uh, create um what do they call it um the down parts which is holding some text Six C seven five and seven D position should be deleted. So to be forty pixel. online the center font family the month on Zealand So this is an encode, uh, is an encoding, right? Now when you go to the HTML tutorial, you will definitely come across, um, for some of you who have gone through uh, some sort of tutorial that have to do the HTML, there's something that is called the HTML encoding, right? In this encoding, it comes with uh, in different symbols, so it is one of them. Right here, I want to use the copyright symbol, that is why this is uh, this represents um, a copyright symbol. This HTML encoding, okay. All right, so you're going to have a span there. 
and this is um, going to be the style called this. So I have a column to be this F M C one zero seven. Your site name. Okay. Okay. So Alright, so this is going to come um, here and going to have a text. Steve Adex here, that is my name, and that is it. That's why you can use your name when going through this. Alright, and that should be it. Now let's work on. Let's work on the H B C S as part of it. Let's see what we have to offer. Okay. Let's check our code and see what we have there. Okay, so it's lingering right here. Nice. So say footer um, should display this width should be one thousand two hundred pixels. Okay, that is two hundred pixels. Let's see, auto degree should be 400 pixels on the first go, right? On the, the go, we only have one go over there. So, yeah, we are going to create four columns with different uh, properties different sizes actually
to have adding a5 pixels right all right so right here is the footer outer button color with this the width should be this auto position be relative Give a padding at the top. Three sixty pixels. Border. Bottom. Okay. Border bottom. Fifty pixel. Solid black. Image grid. Display should be grid. Gap should be two pixel. Grid should be auto slash three columns here. Okay. This IMG. Over here, click the foot attack. So the display should be green. The gap should be set in the pixel. Right. It should be auto, 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 auto. All right for the dark. All right, if that is done, and this. Here. It's going to be enclosed in this one. That is the more reason I recommend you using a VS code. Right, so this is done. We're going to now code and let's see what we have here. Okay. So when you run this, go downwards. Here we have it. It is done. It is done right there. Hello guys.
I want to start this video first off with congratulating you for making it through to the end of this course. It's been a long ride so far, uh, walking you from the beginning and we are right here, okay, to the end of this course. It's uh, really a long journey that we have gone through, okay. Um, so, thanks for uh, enrolling in this course and um, thanks for going through this course, right. And um, I would like to start off with uh, talking about the review, leaving a review and waiting in this course. Now, I would actually advise that uh, you should be able to watch the course from the beginning and through to the end, okay? And remember, this course is not any course like uh, some sort of um, entrepreneur, right? Or some kind of online marketing or stuff like that it's more of like technical right it's not like any drop shipping course or drop servicing or affiliate marketing it's a technical course right so i advise you should watch the course from bit to bit from the beginning to the end and i'll also leave a uh, material which contains source code that you are going to use to make your comparison and your for reference to what you are doing when you are practicing on your own to actually get a clear understanding of what I did throughout the course. Now you can, if you make mistake, you can use the material as a reference point to actually uh, make some corrections at your end. Now it will be very much better, right, to um, let's say give your honest review in this course, right? So the honest review that you're giving in this course will actually help me as an instructor to work on myself, to create more stunning course um, that I intend to do in the future. That's why I'm going to say uh, you should leave your honest review so I can be able to work on myself and every other thing I'll need to add to the course I'm going to prepare in the future, okay? Now I'll talk more of uh, um, the free template. Now in this course, I'm also going to add um, the, let's say, templates, designs. Remember I said I'm, I'm going to give you access to free template designs, right? Uh, so I'll leave a link in the description, right? All the resources parts in this course and you're going to see free CSS templates that you're going to work your hands on. After going through this course, you can be able to have the nice content and understanding and knowledge you have gotten from this course to actually form your own okay so you can be able to um, let's say look at any website of any kind from the knowledge you have derived from this course and actually create your own website of any kind so you looking at any website you can be able to have a clear understanding of what you can be able to do from the knowledge that you have derived from this course that I've worked you through so far, all right? So I'll uh, add free templates, give you access to free templates, a lot more that you can be able to design in this course. And like I said, you can be able to uh, get your hands dirty, right? And you can be able to do some sort of practical uh, demonstration on your own from the knowledge you have derived so far. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, watching the video again and again to actually get a clear understanding of what I've said. I'm trying to, let's say, uh, understand, okay? Try to understand what I've done so far, right? Try to make some analytics, right? Try to understand in depth of what I've said so far from all those parts right so starting from the html i started with uh, using those div tags you tend to understand why i use those div tag what i said about using those div tag and how you can be able to actually make reference or link it or relate it to the css part of what i've said so far i'm trying to get a clear understanding of what i've did so far that's why uh, in this video, in this course, I never 
created a long video. I broke it down into different segments so you can be able to understand what I've done so far. Okay, so it will be much more easier for you to ascertain or um, get a clear understanding of what I have done in the course so far. All right, so you really have to go through the video, watch it bit by bit to get a clear understanding. Now, what I would like to say next is for you to practice. Now, there is an adage that is always said, practice make perfect. Practice make perfect. So, I would advise for you to practice, 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 for you to be a master in CSS green right so you need to try your hands with a lot of template designs and make sure you get every concept of what we have done through this course right when you practice your hands in so many designs that you come across you actually gain confidence to work to anybody or to any employer or someone who is your customer that wants to patronize you to do some designs and you can be able to do the job for the person with confidence so someone can be able to work to you please boss uh, can you be able to create a website design for me you would be like oh sure i can uh, what is your portfolio what have you done so far you'll be like okay this is what i've got done so far you might have um, a list of what you have done so far you can show the person and the person can uh, give you that job and you are good to go so that's why very good to practice 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 make a lot of designs on your own Try a lot of experiment and work on yourself to make yourself a good developer or uh, a good front and uh, engineer. Okay, so you have to really practice to make yourself a very good expert, right, on building website. You know what? Let me uh, give you uh, like a clear example of um, how I started in, in uh, let's say web development and some sort of all those uh, stuff okay um, you know when I started off back then when I was in school uh, in college um, I wasn't getting uh, enough time okay to actually um, let's say work on myself practically so back then we were doing some sort of university required courses that does not have to do with um, something or um, a course related to um, IT, information technology, the course I did actually in full for four years, okay? So we were not having a lot of time. So each of those courses, the lecturers, we are giving us a lot of assignments and um, some mini app projects for me to do group projects, group work. You know, it was very tasky, all right? It was hectic. Now that would um, be able to make me to actually divert or not concentrate. The, lot, the, the, the more time I put into um, let's say um, one course I would definitely need to add those uh, time or that amount of time in other courses shared okay so I wouldn't have to fail other courses there came a time when I was uh, doing some kind of uh, programming right when I was new to uh, Java programming I loved Java programming. I loved programming itself. I was doing that and um, I was stuck into it. 
haven't forgotten that I have a lot, a lot of assignment that I need to do. Okay, that I need to do. And uh, it was something else for me. I was like, why is this school like this? Right? Why is this school like this? Uh, I would I would love them to, let's say, give us um, IT required courses, information technology required courses in full. And we should do it from the beginning to the end with no stress. Why are these people stressing us with courses that does not have to do with IT? Okay, so it was something else I was facing back then in school. I wasn't having enough time to work on myself practically, right? The amount of time I had was uh, to work on cyber security researching, uh, searching for bugs, right? Like cross site scripting, SQL injection, uh, IDOS, you know, a lot of those bugs when it comes to cyber security. So I was doing some sort of research in cyber security I, that, because I had more interest in that part, right? Then later on, I, uh, when I was done, I moved into uh, web development and more of the programming. So that is uh, just a short part of the story, right? So when I started off with web development, I started making research. I started learning. I bought some courses online, uh, a lot of courses. I checked a lot of materials online. I started um, learning the basic, the advanced, and I started practicing. Um, like they said, get my hands dirty, okay? With a lot of uh, um, templates, I, will can, I, I can be able to, let's say, from the concept I've learned so far from those materials, those course, I would just have to, let's say, use those uh, knowledge and let's say, uh, try my hands on it. And that is what helped me to become a professional that I am today, right? I did a lot of studying, you know, I my social life was very, very bad, right? I was um, someone who never, um, like to associate with a lot of people while being indoors, studying, 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 a lot of studying, right? So um, that's really helped my life so far, okay? It really helped my, my life and it took me uh, far, places I have never intended to be today, okay? Um, that is just a short, short story of my life. And I'm very happy to myself that I have this skill and it's really helping me a lot, right? Okay, and that right now I can be able to, let's say, look to web design and actually try to emulate what is there. If I really don't uh, get some parts, I'll make research. And since I've come through some of those terminologies, it's very easy for me to, let's say, create something that is, let's say, similar to what I intend to build. That is just, a glimpse, right? Like a short story of my life, okay? So, in terms of the web de development and some IT uh, infrastructures or uh, data structures or technology I've done so far, okay? So, it really helped my life and I'm really happy I did it. It's, um, you know, it's just a stepping stone for me I still have a long way to go. I still have a lot of learning to do. And that is, that is really about my life, okay? So that is what I point towards you. I point to you actually to actually do, make practice, make research, okay? And you get to understand this and you also become a professional, right? From a noob, right? Just a novice to a professional. Make research, uh, go through a lot of courses, and you really get to know more, right? About the web development, how to use uh, the grid, and what have you, okay? Um, having said this, I would like, if you have any question, I will actually. 
um, try my best as much as possible to answer your questions okay I like I said I'm going to give you um, a link right that you get a lot 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 more of basic to advanced web design template for you to try your hands on to look on those designs right and you can be able to work on yourself more and more to become a professional to build any website of your choice haven't you gone through the knowledge that i've taught you so far and uh, that of your research you can be able to do a lot more on your own become a professional on your own so if you have any question i would like to uh, see your questions okay and i'll try as much as possible to respond to your questions and i will really like your honest review in this course now having said this i think that will be all right and i really hope to see you in courses i might be able to form or develop in the next future okay so that will be it in this part and bye for now ciao